What is going on, Kind of Funny Best Friends? Welcome back to another Kind of Funny Games afternoon stream. It's your boy, Snowbike Mike. And today, we got a pretty special one. Today is going to be a really fun afternoon stream. I'm sure all of you out in the chat are pretty excited about streaming with Kev 101. That's right. Throughout the month of April, we set our monthly goals and we always have some fun with it. I wanted it to be science with Kev because science goes far with Kevin Coelho and he's always there to teach us and guide us through anything that we ask in life. All of those hard hitting questions. But he said to me, he, he said, you know what, Mike, I'd rather teach everybody streaming. And so I said, you know what, Kev, that's a great idea because I know so many kind of funny best friends around the globe want to know how you do it behind the scenes here at Kind of Funny. You're known as the glue and you do all things. I've been privileged enough to go down to the studios in San Francisco and I've seen Kevin work really hard, plugging things in, working his magic, setting everything up from video to audio to production. This man does it all. And so I thought today on the Kind of Funny Games afternoon stream, we'd get to share some insight with Kevin and he's really, really excited. He's really, really excited about teaching all of you behind the scenes magic here at Kind of Funny on what he does on the production side. But guess what? That's not all. On top of that, I wanted to make sure Kevin knew that I was in this with him, right? I wanted to let him know that he doesn't have to do this all by himself. And I wanted to pose the question, what's up with woodpeckers and why they're pecking that wood? So I'm going to bring you a fun PowerPoint presentation all about woodpeckers and what you need to know about woodpeckers and why they're pecking that wood. So we'll talk about all that here in just a little bit of time. But you're probably saying to yourself, dang, Snowbike Mike, you're green screened in to the stream as well. Yeah, that's right. Kevin has done it all. We have so much fun to get into. I want to welcome everybody in. I see you over there in chat. Here's the deal. We got some fun presentations to do. And I need you, chat. I need all of you out there to queue up those questions, comments, concerns about streaming. If you're interested in production, whether it be streaming on Twitch, whether it be YouTube content, whatever that may be, if you have a question for Kevin Coelho or myself, please get those ready to go. We're going to take questions throughout the stream. We'll have live demonstrations with Kevin where he's actually going to bring up OBS and show you what he does and how he does it. So we're really going to go in depth and have some fun with it. But don't forget that this is still a kind of funny games afternoon stream. That means... You can fill up our daily achievement bar, not located at the bottom right now. It's hidden for just no, a little no, bit of time, now. but you can fill it up. Oh, there it is. It is. It's there. You can fill it up with follows, subs, gifted subs, donations, or prime gaming subs. We'll go for extra time if you fill it up. And we're one day away from hitting our goal for the month of April. That is the kind of funny world championship. Spring fling. That's right. Andy Cortez is willing to put is kind of funny world championship belt on the line. We'll find out who's the best gamer here at Kind of Funny for a fun spring fling matchup if we hit our goal throughout the month of April. Don't forget that we have a whole lot of fun coming at you, especially today, streaming with Kev 101. And later tonight, 7.30 p.m., West Coast, Best Coast time, join me and Nick Scarpino on the couch. We got a big bucket of popcorn, enough Coke Zero to kill you. And of course, two incredible guests, Joey Noel and Greg Miller will join us for another 80s action movie watch along. The movie tonight, Roadhouse. And you definitely don't want to miss out on the fun. Tomorrow, Barrett will join me. We're going to play MLB The Show together. And then on Friday, we're going to host the Super Smash Bros. Tournament. So if you think you got what it takes on the sticks to go out there and smash with all of your best friends, we're going to host a tournament. We're going to bring in as many of you as we can. And we will do 1v1 Omega Stage No Items Showdown live. Me and Kevin and Baird live commentating. You battling, maybe against Blessing. We'll see. And one of you will walk out as the champion of the stream. Don't forget, YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays to catch all of the VODs. You guys are crushing it over there subscribing, liking the videos, leaving comments. I see all of your positivity. I love all of it. Remember, we had a ton of fun this week. We played Mount Your Friends on 420. That was a great time. We've been in the war zone with Mark Smalls every single Monday. I'm calling Kevin, I'm calling it. I'm calling it mornings with Mike. And we're just hanging out. Me, 
Nick Scarpino and Kevin. We're going through the internet. We're talking about our weekends. We're talking about life, love, everything in between. And most of all, we're watching fun clips. So make sure to tune in on Mondays right now while Andy is streaming Resident Evil 7 with Blessing. Monday's all about just hanging out. Mondays is just hanging out, having fun with the squad. But I think I've done enough, right? Have I done enough there? Have I gone over everything? I think I have. I think I have. And I think now it's time to jump into our presentation. So to kick it off, we're going to see what's up with woodpeckers and why are they pecking that wood? A presentation <laughs> by Snowbike Mike and his lovely girlfriend. So, Kevin, this all started with a question and an observation. <laughs> it's summertime here in Lake Tahoe. The sure. sun is out. Yeah, totally. The birds are chirping. Everybody's having fun in the sun. But I noticed one thing, Kevin. I noticed... I noticed a knock. And I said, who the heck is knocking at my front door? Nature. Guess what? Nobody was knocking. It was nature, Kevin, is right. <laughs> Turns out woodpeckers are all over the place and the woodpecker is knocking on my neighbor's back door. And I said to myself, why is that woodpecker pecking that wood? I need to know about it. So I went to Kevin Coelho and I said, Kevin, tell me why this woodpecker is pecking this wood. And he said, Mike, I think you need to find that answer yourself and so i did a little research with my lovely girlfriend kevin take me to the next slide so we can tell people what's up with woodpeckers now we did some research and we had a whole lot of fun did you know that there are 23 native species of woodpeckers found here in the united states of america they range from the acorn woodpecker the american three-toed woodpecker which i'm going to tell you a little bit about in just a moment then of course there's the downy woodpecker which is the smallest woodpecker in the U.S. and takes advantage of its size. Because it's so small, it's able to go to areas to feed that other woodpeckers can't due to the accessibility. Then on top of that, there's the red-breasted sapsucker. Kevin, I chose that because I love that name. Sapsucker red-breasted. It's a good name. It's a good name. The red-breasted sapsucker feeds on tree sap as well as insects. The holes they drill are known as sap wells and also provide hummingbirds an additional food source. Pretty cool. Fun thing to know. Nature works together collaborating. Collaboration. And, of course, there is the white-headed woodpecker, which I believe is pecking on my neighbor's house. And we're going to see a live video of that because I went out on location to find out what's up with these woodpeckers oh, and why yeah. are they pecking that this wood. Place. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now their height can range from 2.8 inches to 20 inches. Let that sink in for a second. 2.8 inches, Kevin. It's tiny, but then 20 inches. That's almost two full feet of bird right there. Can you imagine a woodpecker with the force and velocity of that beak and those toes pecking away at almost two feet tall. Incredible to think about. I know it's wild. That's what I said to myself. Then their weight. Very light bird, Kevin. Very light here. Aviation goes far. But 0 0.25 ounces to 19.9 .9 ounces. Pretty incredible there. Kevin, what's an ounce? Like, what's an ounce in my hand? You know what I mean? Not much. Not much? No, no, no. Okay. You need, what, okay. What, okay. 16 of those makes up a pound. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so it's over see, a pound. Over no, no, a pound. No, no, no. Wait, how, how much was it? How many ounces? 19.9 .9 ounces. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't listen to that part, but yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, some defining characteristics about the woodpecker. Woodpeckers have four toes, a stiffened tail that help secure them to the areas that they are latched onto and pecking. Pretty cool. Because of the four toes, it gives them the leverage and the strength to hold on and the stiffened tail allows them to prop up against the tree, the house, or whatever that they're pecking into. They have a long, sticky tongue that we're actually gonna talk about in just a moment. And they have a stiff bill for pecking, duh. Now on top of that, their diet consists of insects, nuts, fruit, and tree sap. You're probably saying to yourself, hold up a second, Mike. You brought up a three-toed American woodpecker. That's right. This woodpecker actually has three toes, unlike the normal four-toe woodpecker. Like its name implies, the three-toed woodpecker has one less toe than any other, and many believe that the trait allows them to lean further away from trees 
for more forceful strike. So pretty cool one there, Kevin, that I wanted to bring up. It's awesome to know about the four toes and how they latch on, but this one has three toes and uses it to an advantage to forcefully peck into wood and more objects, which we're going to get into a little bit later. But you're probably saying to yourself, Snowbike Mike, what's up with that long, sticky tongue? Yeah, pretty interesting stuff here. They have a really long tongue. Actually, some of them have barbed tongues as well, because when they're pecking into that wood, Barbs. looking for insects, they actually can lick their tongue in there and pull you out, which is pretty wild. But you're probably saying to yourself, Snowbike Mike, where the heck does that tongue go? We actually did some research here, and they actually have a weird tongue bone, also known as the hide hide bo bone. Sorry, Kevin, the green screen is blocking what I'm looking at. Can you drop me for just a second? Drop me for a second. Yeah, give me one second. Where is that? Hide <laughs> me for a minute. Bam. The tongue bone or the hide bone of the woodpecker is a very long is very long and winds around the skull through a special cavity, thereby cushioning the brain. Wow. Pretty wild right there, Kevin. Didn't know that one. Pretty weird that it like wraps around their brain for a cushion, almost like a helmet that a football player would say. Now that's the general information about a woodpecker. You're probably saying to yourself, Snowbike Mike, then why are they pecking that wood? And that's what I want to know about too. Kevin, next slide. Why are they pecking that wood? Great question, Woody the Woodpecker. To search for food, to create a nest, establish their territory, and attract mates by drumming. So some really cool stuff here. Of course, they're searching for food, whether they be digging into trees to create sap wells, like we talked about, that red-breasted sap over there, or, of course, looking for insects inside of different wooded trees like forests and or other areas. They're looking to create a nest as well, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit because these suckers, if they get into your house, we got a problem, Kevin. We got a big problem, and we're going to need to talk about that. But also a really cool one is they're very territorial. They like to establish their territory. They actually live there year-round, and they like to make sure you know that this is their spot. So you'll see them drumming is the term. They're going to drum to make a loud noise to let other birds and prey know that this is their area. And also it will help attract a mate. So that's why they're pecking that wood to not only look for food sources and possibly create a nest, but they're letting you know that this is their area and you need to stay out of it and possibly say what up to cute guys or girls. Next slide. Finally, this is some on the job research. I went outside and I said, why is this gosh darn woodpecker pecking this wood? So I went outside, I busted out my camera phone, and this is what I believe to be the white-headed woodpecker that is pecking at my neighbor's back house. Kevin, roll the tape. Um, You know, I'm going to be 100%. Oh, hold on. I don't know how to... Sorry, we can't play media in this presentation. How can I play this? Well. <laughs> Can uh, I play this? Oh no, it doesn't doesn't want to let me play this. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. There's some great footage right here. No, oh good. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> That's why in the future, Mike, we have to make use the what is it? Slides by Google. Now, Kevin, would you like me to send this to you via assets right now? Sure, Cause I could. Sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, <laughs> I have yeah. references. Send, we send cited your... my sources. APA format for everybody yeah, out there. You the know what I mean? The chat really, really wants to. Kevin, you have to download it. I'm right clicking, and there's no option to download. Oh, God. Don't worry, Kevin. I will send it to you. My dog keeps farting, and it's bad. It is bad. Hold on me. Right monitor. Oh. I'm sending now, Kevin. It's just really. <laughs> Messing up my presentation. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm I'm really flustered now. It's really messing up my presentation. You have it. You got it. Don't worry. <laughs> relax. <laughs> takes I've sent it to assets, Kevin. Takes us takes a second to to get loaded there. Oh no, it doesn't. It's here. Oh, we have it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna turn the right monitor back on. Boop. And then I'm gonna go to the folder here. Boop. And then downloads. Boop. 
get out of this presentation. Hold on. We're going to go here, and we're just going to drop this little video. There it is. There it is. And there it is. 11. Bam. Minimize that. Full screen. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> That's what, look at what he's done to the side of this person's house, Kevin. Do you oh, see yeah. that right there? Yeah. And they don't find oh, the Oh, yeah. Him, huh? <laughs> Kevin, I find it quite annoying. But I also respect it now that I know about it. But also, they should probably get this checked out because it can do a lot of harm to your home. So you got to make sure you know about this because... Now, insects and or rodents could possibly get into this. Also, as well, you might notice that the woodpeckers like to store food in a lot of these areas. And a lot of that food could spoil and go bad, which then would invite a lot of insects and, and animals that you don't want inside of your house. So the U.S. Forest Service recommends that you definitely take care of this in a timely manner. But you also remember that these are part of nature and you have to protect these animals. You're not allowed to go out there, shoot it with a BB gun, throw an acorn at it. No, no. You got to be nice to nature, okay? You got to go out there, call a specialist or what they have for repellents. Kevin, you'll notice, you notice the owl that they put yeah. up at the top yeah, not right of your screen. So repellents, visual, model owl, snake decoys, and owl silhouettes are mostly ineffective, as we see in this video right mm -hmm. here. Toy plastic twirlers, windmills, Flashing mirrors and aluminum pie cans can be used with limited success. Now, if you look at the back of my neighbor's house, he used to have little twirlers off the top of his roof because clearly he's battled Woody the Woodpecker before to no success. Sound, repeatedly fretting the bird with sudden noises such as banging on a garbage can lid, hand clapping, or toy cat pistols may keep them away. Sticky substances, sticky repellents such as roost no more, can be smeared on tree trunks, wood sidings, etc. The birds dislike the tacky pudding, and a water hose is also a safe alternative to try to repel these birds. Now, Kevin, this woodpecker has made this man's home his territory. He's mm, going to be yeah. here all summer banging on this person's windowsill. And I feel bad for him because I quite enjoy the woodpecker knock. And that has been... What's up with woodpeckers and why they peck in that wood? My Snowbike Mike and his lovely girlfriend. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and my PowerPoint presentation. I had a lot of fun. Science goes far here at Kind of Funny. And that's all I have for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, how did that go? That was fantastic, Mike. Uh, I think everyone <laughs> everyone enjoyed every aspect of it. So there we see. Let me see. I'm putting myself on here. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What's so funny? I uh, just it's so much fun, dude. That was it. I had a you great time a great with that. Job. I had a great wow. time with that. The chat is loving it. Loving it. Let's see. What do I do here? Whoop. Let's move that over here. Now, as we reset the room, of course, thank you to everybody for putting up with that dumb presentation. I wanted to let Kevin know that I'm by his side and I want to do dumb, fun things with him and not just make it about him because Kevin Coelho does so much and he's willing to go above and beyond for anybody. And I will always let you know, best friends out there, all of the chat know if you know me, I want to do that with all of you because it's not just about me, it's about us. So when I win, you win. And when you win, I win because we are a community, we're best friends, and we'll go far together. And that's the best part about this. So I wanted to do that alongside Kevin Coelho to let him know, hey, homie, I'm always here for you like you are for me. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun with that one. That's APA sourcing. Saw you out there in the Twitch chat. That's my APA source, just so you know. Wanted to make sure we sourced all of our material there. But, but today's a fun day. Today is a day that's made possible by all of you for continuing to support our streaming efforts here at Kind of Funny. Each and every weekday at 11 a.m. after Kind of Funny Games, you can catch our Kind of Funny Games afternoon streams. Myself and other Kind of Funny personalities will be here to play games, hang out, and of course, most importantly, engage with all of you. I always want to make this a fun time for not only the Kind of Funny crew and the games that they play and they want to play, but I want to make it fun for all of you. I want to make a, a way and find a good balance where we can engage with all of you, hang out, answer questions, kick it, play games like we will be doing on Friday and just have a good time. So I hope you all enjoy it. And I always appreciate your support. They appreciate your support. And we love having fun together with all of you. But today is an awesome day because we're going to learn streaming. 
with Kevin. So I hope you have your pen, your pad, and you're ready to take notes because Kevin Coelho has set up and is prepared for live demonstrations, a full rundown of what we do here at Kind of Funny to help create an incredible product that we produce here on Twitch and on YouTube and all of the different avenues that we put out our content. So if you are an aspiring content creator, whether you're interested in streaming, YouTube, podcast, whatever it may be, or you just want to know what the heck is that guy Kevin Coelho doing in the background all the time, now is the day that you can find out. So cue up those questions, comments, and concerns. Don't type them in yet because there's a lot to go over. And I also went over to Reddit. I put up my first ever Reddit post on the Kind of Funny subreddit. And I asked all of you, hey, what's up? You got any questions? Let me know. I'll ask them directly to Kevin. So for this next hour and a half or possibly longer, if you support that bar and fill up our daily achievement bar, we'll go for as long as you like. And then maybe we'll play some Fortnite with you. Because I know Kevin loves Fortnite, and so do I. I love me some Fortnite. But, Kevin, I have, a lot of qu- I have a lot of questions here, but I know you want to kick this off. So I want to kind of open up the floor for you to kick it off, guide it however you like, and then when you're ready, I can go into questions. I can check the Twitch chat. We can go anywhere you'd like. But I think, you know, you starting off with the basics of what you do, how mm-hmm. you do it, and then we go from there. Now... I feel like I, I want to start by saying, like, kind of, kind of screw myself a little bit, starting with the really well done presentation, because like I haven't super planned anything out. I, I've just created an OBS thing with nothing on it, and I was gonna build kind of our setup so you guys can see the like step by step process, and then maybe you guys throw questions at me. Um, but like, yeah, you you planned everything out real nice. Yeah, you know? maybe it makes me it makes me look like a bum. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, uh, you're going to be incredible, Kevin, and everybody's really excited. Uh, would you like me to kick it off and just kind of guide you to start it off? Because I can do that for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, um, so let I, we, tell sorry, me, Kevin. just briefly, I wanted to let you know how we've got everything set up. I've got me and you on green screened on top of our OBS like setup. Now, I'm this. I've never done this before, but you can use two OBS programs at the same time. So I'm using one to run our actual stream, and then I'm capturing another one so that I can replicate the build that I have and walk people through each step. And then, yeah, towards the end or later on, we can show people how, like, we can throw, have people throw ideas at us, and we can try to sort it out and see what we can do together. Sound good? Love that, Kevin. I really think this is going to be a great time. It's going to be really, really exciting. And an awesome opportunity for everybody to get their questions and uh, find some answers. So, Kevin, let's start off with this, right? You are the production manager here at Kind of Funny. Title, you know, a lot more than that. But you do everything behind the scenes. When you start your day, what is this program that we're using? And what do you encourage others to use when mm-hmm. we look at streaming and video production? So that's a great question. So basically, when it goes, as far as streaming goes, personally, I love OBS. I think it's a fantastic platform that is constantly evolving and um, adding cool features. Like one of the biggest complaints we've had for years is that you, you, you change something in OBS and there's no way to unchange it easily. So there's no control Z, no undo function. But 20, so this is OBS 26.1.1. OBS 27, a beta came out recently. And it now has the undo redo function, which is really, really, really cool. So I really, really love uh, OBS. There are other programs, there are many other programs like Streamlabs, vMix that you can use to uh, stream. I personally, there are some minor features that I really, really like about OBS. Like on the fly, when you're trying to crop something, all you have to do is hold Alt down and then grab a corner and move it, and that allows you to do a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of like little things like that that I think make it so easy to use. Um, also, it, it incorporates uh, Twitch. So like you can see right now on OBS, I've logged into our Twitch account, and we have on the right side here stream information so I can make changes to the name between streams. So when we're going from Kind of Funny Games Daily to um, the gaming stream that we do every day, I can quickly drop the name in there 
and hit save and it'll update the name. I can also monitor chat on the bottom right here so that uh, if anything's going wrong, the kids can let me know that like, oh, hey, the sound's not coming through or it's way too loud. And I could right away just see in this screen where I'm controlling everything that uh, the, what's going on with uh, what's outputting. Now, the other programs that we use, we like to use Discord for video calls. So as far as I've tested out, Discord, same thing. It's the minor, like the little differences, but they all add up. Personally, I think the Discord, we, we pay for the Nitro Boost, uh, which is a system that I still don't 100% understand. But wait, why are people saying? Kevin. <laughs> Sorry, Paula had me a, I had a question. She has to do a call in a little bit, and maybe I won't be allowed to tell. Uh, we can hear you. Um, so yeah, we use uh, Discord to do our video calls, and the way we bring in people via Discord is just the screen capture. So for the particular way that I do things, it's really necessary to uh, have multiple screens. I would imagine you need two minimum, three is ideal. And that's a lot of screens, but when you're doing this kind of stuff to the level that we're trying to, you know, it, it helps. Why not use NDI for what? Sorry, see, I'm, now I'm reacting to chat. The same, now you, you're Kevin, you're in the driver's seat. I'll bring you the questions. You just continue to bring your excellence. But Kevin, that's a good start. So we start off with OBS is what you use. And you use different features to bring that in. I want to bring in a question here from Bron Diesel. He asks over on Reddit, I'd love to get a breakdown of the hardware and software used with a high-level demonstration collecting everyone's feed and broadcasting them. So we're going to get into some demonstrations of how we grab everybody's feeds and bring them into you. But Kevin, you are the guy behind the scenes. A lot of questions were asked, what is the stuff that you were using in the studio compared to what you're using at home? So now a lot of you have brought up the Wavelink 3 and stuff like that. Why don't we get over just a baseline knowledge of what are the cameras you all use, the microphones you all use, and how do they get that to you? Uh, so at the studio, like there's a big difference because the way we do things here is totally different than the way we were doing things at the studio. And there are some changes that will come through. Um, so at the studio, we have a soundboard where all the audio comes in and can be mixed, uh, right there. Here, it's way more difficult because essentially we have to capture the discord audio for the conversations and then bring in other audio sources through a di but we can capture desktop audio but then if we have any audio playing it gets all mixed up and uh, what i love it at the check you go again I, I mispronounced this kid's name and then somebody wrote gotta change your name on twitch now um uh yeah so with basically we use now that we're in like playing remote it like audio was a huge challenge um because we have all we use srt to stream right so that means that you will send me your video stream th using a program like obs and the audio is embedded there and the way we use vmix your audio channels are coming through it so whenever i su switch between each different video feed, it switches the audio channels. And what we use is the uh, Wave 3 comes with a program called Wavelink, which I can bring up right now. Um, there it is. And uh, can I make this longer? No. And Wavelink is awesome. Unfortunately, it only works if you have a Wave 3. Um, I believe that uh, there's a software called banana i'm sure the chat knows its full name but it's another audio program that works in a similar way where you create virtual channels so this essentially is a virtual uh audio mixer uh yeah voice meter banana thank you whatnot yeah that sounds about right yes the whatnots yeah. uh huh so actually let me show you a little bit more we can go into our discord and i can pull up the settings 
And yeah. audio video, great. So I'm pulling this up right here. So on Discord, we have our input set to, oh, interesting. That doesn't matter, but we have our input set to, no, that, that makes sense. Wavelength stream, okay, which is this it. output right here. See, it says stream mix. And Hold on, Paul is in a meeting. <laughs> That's all right, Kevin. You hold for a second. I'll talk about some basic stuff as well while Kevin jumps into that. And when he's free, he'll let us know. Um, on the basic side of streaming, it's fun because I started streaming in 2015, and it's been a cool evolution of different gear and equipment that I've gotten over the years, right? It started with just streaming off of the Xbox with that capture and then growing over to the PC side with a capture device, a camera, a microphone, and so on. And seeing the evolution of products alongside inside my studio, it's been really, really cool of looking around and going from the Logitech C922 cameras that I had, which is just a simple USB plug-in, along with the Blue Yeti microphone and the AT2020, which is just simple USB mics that were great on Discord calls and on OBS, a very simple plug-and-play type of situation and then the evolution of that to move on into the sony a families where you have the big camera that's really really nice but on top of that you have to go out there and get special plugins for that through the elgato cam link is a product that you'll need for that on top of that we've upgraded the mic into the sure smb7 that you've seen down at the kind of funny studio before and that requires a mixer actually as well so it's not just a simple usb plug in so i had to go out and get the go xlr mic is or go xlr audio mixer as well but a lot of these things are pretty quick and easy seeing how we live in such a big streaming world that the tutorials are out there your friends are pretty knowledgeable about that but it actually is almost plug and play but i will say that the camera to the mic and the audio mixer were some big pieces for me along with the elgato capture card that you can't forget if you're going on to pc which I really recommend the external ones if you're a beginner streamer. The Elgato HD 60S Plus is what I rock. It has 4K pass-through. It does not do 120 frames per second pass-through. That's when you have to get into the internal. But if you're an early streamer, the Elgato uh, products are really, really good for me. Now, Kevin, I know you've used some different ones, but I want to get back to where you were and the products that you had now that you could possibly talk. Sorry, let me just for a moment get back to the Wavelink and how we use that. So what I do then is in Discord, I have the output. So you can see here's Discord settings. I have the output set to Wavelink voice chat. And in, well, click the wrong button there, sorry. In Wavelink, we can now introduce a new audio source. You can see voice chat is right here. And now, Mike, when you talk, your audio is coming just to this particular uh, input. So go ahead and talk, and you can see the levels there. This is Mike talking. And yes, as Kevin said, this is really cool because instead of getting this big mixer like I have, the Elgato Wave 3 actually brings you a mixer with that USB microphone, right, Kevin? So you actually save a Absolutely. lot of money without having to have both of the products here that I have. Mm -hmm. It does have some issues. Certain games, and I'm forgetting which one there are, but the audio doesn't work the right way because so you can see there's a game tab you can go into the settings here and then right here there's a bunch of options on what you have going on and um you can then set so imagine you have a game here like um a sweater and you can go into defaults and set it to whatever you want specifically so it could be the fx channel or an aux channel or set it to game and then it introduces it as its own field that you control control the levels at. So right here, what we do is I have my stream mix set as the output. So this means if I need to, I can share audio with the boys of whatever's on. So if I'm watching a browser video, I can turn on this, which sends it out to the stream mix. And now they can hear what I'm hearing. Um, and also I can control the levels independently. On top of that, we can also introduce all of these inputs into OBS as their own separate things. And I'll show you that a, a little bit later. Uh, what filters do you use for mics? We don't use any filters. Uh, I mean, we have a pop filter, but I think what you mean is digital filters. 
Um, it's it's just uh, direct feeds. Yeah. The audio sounds That's good correct. enough. The Wavelength is a great mic that does a really good job uh, interpolating the audio. And back when you were using the, the same one that Mike has, the, the SM7B, is that right? Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, they're also fantastic. I mean, in the settings, when we had an actual soundboard, we would spend a, a, a couple days tweaking the levels to make try to get the audio sound as clean as possible. But... Wave threes do make it simpler, uh, but I, I do very much miss having a soundboard because it was really nice when we have a quiet guest or a guest that doesn't have a fancier mic. Maybe they're using just their headphones or uh, you know their Apple uh, headphone headphones with a little mic on there, and the audio comes in a little low. Sometimes it can be difficult to ex- try to explain like, hey, go into Discord, turn the volume up, or go into your mic settings, turn the volume up, and it would be really nice to just crank up the, the microphone on my side. You can't do that independently in Discord. Yeah, all right. Well, I think that's all good for audio. Uh, do we want to talk about cameras? Yeah, I think we should talk about cameras yeah. because I think that's a big difference. A lot of people want to know what it was like working from home and working in the studio, of course. In the studio, not many people get to see behind the scenes, right, Kevin? Yeah. They only see what's in front. And I know you took a lot of time with the team to create the best setup possible with multiple cameras and different qualities. And now we've all gone inside and at home. Can you give us a little rundown of what we saw at the studio now compared to working from home? Similar to what a lot of people would do from their streaming setups, what they could use. Yeah, so um, at the studio, we all used uh, Canon. Wow, this looks like crap. Why does this look so bad? I'll worry about that in a minute. At the studio, we used the Canon C300 was our main camera, Mark II. Wait, Mark? Mark I. And then we had two Canon C100 Mark IIs. These are really high-end professional cameras that frankly we probably shouldn't have been using. Well, I don't know why this looks so weird. Uh, and then when we first moved, and, and those cameras are great, but you need a whole bunch of different systems to incorporate everything. You're gonna need, um, you're gonna need like a switcher, which is a device that essentially you plug in a bunch of different inputs and then can switch between it. But it also allows you to do like keying effects, and different things like that. We used the the Blackmagic 4ME, uh, and that's a fantastic prosumer level switcher, which means that it lets you do everything that the commercial grade stuff lets you do, but is cheaper essentially. Um, and and those go they're they're actually fairly expensive. I think if I remember correctly, that's like a two thousand dollar device. So every component was really expensive, and it's actually pretty amazing the level of video quality that we can bring from our homes. Uh, I added here so that I can show you guys. This is the Logitech Brio. So this is Logitech's like four K uh, little webcam, and when we introduced this, it I mean it's. You can see it's it's not the prettiest looking camera, but for the first several, I want to say for the first several months, or at least the first couple of months, we were using these cameras to do all of our streams. And it wasn't until afterwards that we in, we started using the Sony A6400. But with that camera, you need a couple of things. You're going to need a fancy lens. Like we have something called a Sigma Ooh, 16 millimeter lens, which look at that. You can yeah. see that naturally, like that without any effects, it if you set something close, the focus on it is really, really crisp. And the focus behind there, it creates a bokeh effect. So that like blur, you gotta cover your face. There it is. So the Sony A6400s have um, a really, really good face detection. So you have to cover it. And then look at that blur behind that. That's so cool. That's why we have these lenses. Um, but they are expensive. Uh, the, the camera themselves for the body, I think, is $800. The lens is like... 400? Two to 400 yeah, I, yeah, I felt yeah, like yeah. it was about $1,000 to $1,200 yeah. uh, and purchase then on, here. And then on top of that, you have to then buy a cam link, 
which at the start yes. of all this, this pandemic, it was very, very difficult to find any of this stuff. The cam links were sold out for quite a while, and that kind of slowed down uh, our upgrade. Actually, a best friend sent over. He was like, hey, I have an extra cam link, and sent it over. So that was awesome. That was really nice. Um, but it just, even for us, like it was really difficult to get all this stuff. What camera again? It's the Sony A6400. Uh, but the Sony 6000 uh, works pretty well and is um, a bit cheaper. Uh, yeah, Fran uses the same camera. I mean, a lot of people do now. But I believe that we copied it after uh, Gary would have got it. We were all just like, well, if, if he can get this camera, we should all have these cameras. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, it can do the job. Which lens? The Sigma 16 millimeter, I believe, is the name of the lens. Sigma 16, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, Kevin, yeah. You, you ready for some more questions? Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, let's. I'm going to read off some questions coming from Reddit, and then we're going to get into you Twitch chat. We're going to do some live demonstrations. But, Kevin, here's just some basic questions that I'd love you to run through as we continue to go on. So this is coming from Parkour Cowboy. Uh, what specific capture cards do you recommend to get or avoid? Uh, so I, I feel like capture cards, like that stuff's always being updated. It's really easy for them to update it in the back end too. So it, it, I heard a lot like a shit of like black magic, the capture internal capture cards had a lot of problems. And recently I've heard that they've they're They work pretty well. Um, I personally really like a company called Aver Media, but um, I had a bunch of problems where we couldn't figure out why we couldn't get their new series of cards to work. That's actually what we use here. Let me grab it. I believe this is the GC551. Let me see. No, 553. But it's just this little guy here, and we would connect it and couldn't figure out how to work. It uses a USB Type-C. Uh-uh-uh. It's not there. It is, uh, and it's just HDMI in and HDMI out. And as it turns out, the problem was it needed a USB 3.1 cable, and it says it on the side. But due to just our incompetence, we just didn't have the right the right type of USB Type C. And once I figured out that, it like got rid of all the issues. Um. We also really like the Elgato, the HD60+, Plus, and I'm a huge fan of the Elgato, Elgato's internal card. Internals, nice, yeah. yeah. Pass through with 120 frames is nice. Absolutely. It's a bit of a bummer that the uh, Elgato Camlink Pro doesn't have the 120 frames pass through. That's kind now, of Now, that's interesting. So you're now that one Kevin I thought was just all going in correct you're saying you're looking for something coming out i thought that new one was just four ports of going in it does to save me on that space yeah it does but like i feel like most people aren't using that many cameras because four is a lot so it would be really nice to I also four. oh yeah you do yeah you do. i'm a nutcase though yeah, so don't are. worry about yeah, it yeah you are i love it <laughs> and like i guess some big time streamers do use multiple cameras but I feel like two or three would be fine, and then utilizing one, and you still can um, utilize it to. Uh, sorry, I <laughs> read in the chat. Uh, you you still can utilize one for, I think four K up to thirty. So if you're doing, I think you can also do ten eighty sixty, which is should be totally fine for streaming since sixty is the highest that you can actually stream, ten eighty sixty. Uh, uh, uh. So I, I, I would love to try one of those cards. If not that, the Black Magic equivalent, which is a very similar card, um, for our future studio setups. So instead of having a cam link and a Elgato capture device or a, and a capture device next to it, I would love to just have one chipset in there that's taking care of all that wire, all that space. Um, because I'm I always trying to minimize our sets, uh, so that. The less things you have out there, the less things hopefully are breaking. Hopefully. Fingers crossed on Kevin, that. Kevin, continuing on with Parkour Cowboy, a couple more questions. What kinds what kinds of physical switches do you prefer? Not quite sure on that one, but I'll let you go in there. I think maybe he means my Elgato Stream Deck, 
but I'll let you handle that one. Any traps to avoid for hardware that end up causing more problems than solution? Any general websites you recommend you come across when you have issues? And most importantly, blue store or yellow store? I don't know what that means. But Kevin, blue store go on that or one. yellow store? I'm a little confused on that one, too. If anyone wants to uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. break it down for me, that'd be great. Um, let's see. Sorry. Um... I really like stream decks. Um, but that being said, I also use the foot pedals for switching between different uh, video feeds on vMix. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So it's it's funny. It like Stream decks are a little bit more expensive, but they're also really pretty and they do a lot of really cool stuff. I have the Stream Deck XL, which is the big boy version. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Honestly, we were given that as like uh, Elgato just sent us a couple, and I I love it. I'm not even sure how much they cost, but they have revolutionized how we do things uh, because with the press of a button, it plays the intro, starts the record, switches to the right destination so the intro goes out, then has a timer set so then it switches over to the... Um, the scene with uh, ga like games daily, so it you can automate so much, and it's really really easy to do. It just requires some t thinking and testing. Um, now what would I use if I were a small boy? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I I'm not sure. The Stream Deck normal works great too, I, and it has a lot of I, buttons as well. Yeah, I would recommend the you no. Know, depends on how big your production is and what you're really getting into for a normal generic streamer similar to myself i would recommend the normal size stream deck i don't think that the small stream deck with only six buttons would be of use to yeah, me but i do like the normal one because as well even if you get the small one you can create folders that will have more buttons and you can go deeper and deeper and create more space but i noticed that the small one seemed like too small and then the medium one was perfect. The big one is like a dream, right? But I could see myself not using all the buttons and having a lot of wasted space there. So I really enjoy just the middle ground one. I think it hits on all the areas that you can do with that. Kevin, keeping it going. You ready for this one? Yeah. Also, um, real quick. I've tell just me. Yeah, Kevin. I'm walking us through how I put together our scenes. Uh, right here, well, this, this first image called background that's just a PNG with certain things cut out. Actually, let me see. I should probably just whoop. working from home. Let's see if I can pull up the actual image. That doesn't matter. Uh, so I throw that on here and then I create a desktop capture. And that's what I was just did as you were talking. And I've cropped everything out except for your camera. And then I lower that and I put that on the bottom. So you see that? Now I can resize this guy, get it to fit where I want to, and then crop out the rest. Hold. Though, so that's the question right here. Borzen comes in and says, okay, how are you able to crop the source without having to go into the transformation menu on OBS? Is it a plugin or what the heck type of magic are you doing? So, Kevin, this is a really cool trick for people to know. Do that one more time, how you crop that again. So and tell us doing, how you did it. So what we're doing is we're holding Alt. And that allows you to change the crop on OBS. Now, this is like the biggest feature that Streamlabs lacks, but it's so simple to do. Um, if you, like different buttons do different things. I think control, no. Is it shift? Yeah, shift will warp you. You see that? Yeah, it's shift will warp you. You got to be yeah. careful on that one. Yeah. Right, because now the warp doesn't go away. You can't get it to slap got back. It. So what you have to do is go here, hit reset, transform, it opens it up all the way. I'll put it on top so that I can see it better. Press Alt, grab any of the squares. See the corner pieces there and in the middle. Grab any of the squares while holding Alt, click, and then that allows you to crop. Same thing. I like to just go to your borders. Bam, bam, bam. And then put it back underneath the background layer. Something also that's super important is naming conventions for stuff. Um, the way I do stuff is that 
right now we're capturing a window that has two slots in it, right? So uh, let me redo this then. Uh, actually, no, let me introduce a new one. And so uh, for all of you asking out there, Streamlabs OBS does allow you to press Alt and crop, just so you do no, know. No. I do use that all the time. Streamlabs? Uh-huh, Streamlabs does now oh, really? you do that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't uh -huh. realize that. Oh, okay, cool. That's a big That's a big deal. Um, let me do one more. So I'm going and adding a, a source, hitting display capture. Now I'm going to name it something that fits with my naming convention. So the last one is 2cam slot 2. So this one I'm calling 2cam slot 1. And then we switch that over to which, so I have three displays and I switch it over to my left one. There it is, okay. And now holding Alt, I'll pull the corners, crop around that screen, yeah. Move this so it's in the lower spot and I mean, sure, we can put my camera feed there, Alt and crop it down. We can even crop tighter and bring it up like that Get rid of this side stuff. And now we've got my camera being introduced. Now this is funny because this is a shared screen that I'm sharing with uh, Mike from an OBS capture. So the quality of this particular video is really shitty. Uh, let's see where... Yeah, and then you guys are seeing that even smaller. So there we go. I hit Alt. Now I can move Mike over here. Hit Alt, crop it out. Now, you can see that Mike has a green screen. So how do we utilize that so that uh, we can do something, actually get rid of that green? It's pretty simple. You right click and you go into filters. Here you have your effects. These are all your video effects. So if you go into effects, you can look. There's a bunch of them. The one we care about right now is called chroma key. So you add chroma key effect, and it's like there. And it defaults to green, and you can see it's already taken his green away. Um, but it's not, it's not great. There's a little bit of gray haziness on the right. So what you can do is just play with the settings. And here's the truth. I don't know what any of this stuff does. You know what I mean? I'm just playing around with stuff. That's, not, that's worse. That's better. Uh, and then like that's what we do. Because you can always re hit defaults, and it resets it to about, back to what it was. So don't be too scared. Well, that's lowering the brightness there. That looks like that's working. So we hit close. Sure, that's fine. So there it is. We were able to green screen it out. And let me see something real quick. Let's get an image. Mike, what do you want as your background? An image is my background? Mm -hmm. I would like that sapphire blue Lake Tahoe, please. Okay. So give me one second. You just go to Google. I almost Sapphire. said a woodpecker chat. I see y'all out there. I, I almost, almost did. I almost, I almost did. did. I almost the, did. <laughs> I almost did the video of the woodpecker behind you, but it's fine. <laughs> Lake Tahoe. I don't like that it's not coming up right away. I mean, Lake Tahoe should be the first thing in there. 13th most photographed place on the planet, Emerald Bay. Beautiful for morning and night. A nice cruise around the bay. You can also check out the Vikings home, the nice tea... Uh, Tea Party Castle in the middle of the Emerald Bay. Beautiful. Most, everybody should check it out. If you haven't seen Lake Tahoe, you know, I yell at you all about it. Please go check it out. Check it, check it out. Hold on. An image is loading that I like. Uh, and of course, for everybody watching out there, this is Mike and Kev teaching you streaming 101. We're going through the Reddit comments. We're going to go into the Twitch comments. We're giving you live demonstrations on anything you want to know about how Kevin does it all here at Kind of Funny. So please make sure to let us know if you have any questions. I will do my best. But uh, yeah, we'd love to talk streaming with all of you. It's something that me and Kevin truly love. Kevin does it all here at Kind of Funny. You can ask me questions about streaming from home and what that looks like. And we will bring you all of our knowledge that we can. But you have Kevin Coelho, the glue, the big dog right here to answer anything you got. So what you can then do is I've downloaded the image here. And then you just drag it and drop it. There it goes. And it's going to drop on this particular scene that we've made. So then you drag it to the bottom, put it behind Mike, 
Oh, look at that. Your shirt's black, like, is a little translucent, so we can fix Getting that in a, a second. Blue, yeah. So same thing. You crop it out. And you can do the same thing with the video as well, which is pretty cool. And then you can have the video on loop. You can even do the same thing with another display capture. So let's go here. Add display capture. Hold on. Where is it? Display capture. And we're going to just call this right monitor. Switch it over to that. Okay. Let's see if I can loop this. Yeah, loop, mute, because we don't need to hear it. Crop that down. Perfect. And if we wanted to, we could make that your background here. Look at that woodpecker just packing away. Look at that thing. Just in the background there, right next to Mike. That's what we're doing. <laughs> peaches, you rock, Peaches. You're the yeah. best. So you can have anything. Now, when you do this, now, like you can see my mouse there. If you want to get rid of the mouse, you can click on there and just turn off right uh, capture cursor. And now you can't see my mouse anymore. But if you do anything with this, like open it up, and it'll change the size. It'll move it around because it's just capturing this display. Uh, so let's go back to the, instead of this, delete that. Excellent. Um, how did he loop? So on the video that I have playing, if you right click, there's just a f option for loop. And a lot of times yeah. that'll be there. Mm -hmm. That also works with YouTube videos and yep. just a bunch of different players. Um, it's great. Kevin, question from the press pool really quick before we move it, on. Go for it. The difference between using a green screen and not using a green screen. Will I see a dip in my video quality if I use a green screen? Like my question is, is I like being immersed in the game and I like that I'm here on the content, but I also notice that maybe my video quality isn't as good as it would be if I dropped the green screen and just let it happen without the chroma key filter. Is there any cadence to that? Is there any truth to that if I would see a dip in that? That's interesting. I'm not entirely sure, but you can always test to find out what the effects of whatever you're doing is. So we have task manager opener here, and then we're gonna go into your camera Go back into filters and turn that filter off. So you can see GPU usage is around 50%. Now, granted, I have a lot going on. I'm streaming, and on top of that, I'm using two OBS programs. So let's see, GPS usage. It doesn't look like there was a giant bump. There might have been something. It might have gone from uh, on this. Uh, you can see none of these quadrants or none of these uh graphs are showing a massive jump it kind of looks under like under 3d there was a little bit of a dip from 60 ish to 56 but that is fairly insignificant so let's turn it back on and see if we see a same same bump like that so what was that again filters and then just now that you've got it set up it works like that you can turn on and off but let's get rid of that let's let's fix that sp like color spills happening and making you a little bit ghost like and transparent that's not it. That's it. That's the one. There we go. Now you're less see-through there. Okay, good. Close. And then, yeah, it looks like under th the 3D, it kind of jumped up a little bit, up to 60. And now instead of hanging around more the 50, it, it's kind of all over the place. But it seems like it does bump it a little bit. But it's depending on your GPU, it'll affect it differently. So you you can always open up task mass or task manager and check out things like this if you're worried Kevin. about stuff. We do this all the time with like VMix and stuff when we're doing the streams. Yes, go ahead. Next question coming in from Reddit. We have NV Nav. What are the differences between running the streams when you were all in the office and running them while working from home? Do you feel like any of the things you had to figure out while working from home will continue to help the streams? When you eventually go back to the office. A lot of what we figured out is going to help with the gameplay stuff in the future. We plan to have a gameplay room with like, I don't know, let's say it's got four booths in it that people can come in and everything is set up for them. So the idea is it's going to be nice and easy. They don't have to do anything. Right now, you, you, you can see us start the stream sometimes and people are freaking out because it's like, this game won't let us connect. Hopefully... Someday in the future, Mike's going to spend an hour getting in there and making sure everything's connected already. Um, 
that being said, like the, the stuff that we're doing directly affects that. Some people in the chat were asking me why we don't use NDI. Well, NDI doesn't work long distances. That's if you have the computers in the same spot. Uh, and when we someday have the new studio set up, we will be using probably some sort of NDI to get that all going and working right. Um, I think, does that answer everyone's question? Yeah, that's a great one right there, Kevin. Okay. Uh, next one up, coming up from Z Man Dude Guy 277. What is the methodology behind capturing and switching between multiple gameplay streams used by Kind of Funny? And also, what are the thing, what are the main things to consider as far as GPU, CPU, and all that jazz when building or purchasing a pre-built PC? Mm, that's a tough one. I, I'm not a huge technical expert when it comes to that sort of stuff. I, I know that everything we've used so far has worked really well. Uh, so we use a program called vMix. Uh, sorry, I was just reading someone here in the, in the U.S. <laughs> uh, yeah, we use a program called vMix to uh, receive SRT streams. And I'll show you that what that looks like now. That's a little bit more complex. And really, the, the, that is going to be very, very taxing on your GPU. Um, let's see, I'm opening it up here. And vMix is an awesome program, but it's difficult to use. It took quite a bit to learn for me. So we have here, uh, each one of these SRT inputs are, is potentially someone's stream. Uh, so if Mike were to send me his video, let's see what I have it saved as reacts. 303. So yeah, this one here would be Mike's stream. So he could start sending and it is super low latency uh, videos of like streams that uh, are really good about, you can determine the, like the quality is tied to your connection at home. Um, but we use vMix in a very, very basic level where it pretty much all it does is it's receiving all of our feeds, and then from there, we can just hit this external button and introduce that feed to uh, OBS, because that makes it easier. Now, the problem is we're running two programs, and like uh, the GPU isn't bumping up now, but if Mike were to send me his feed, you would see a significant bump in GPU. So it's just... You have to try to figure out how well the the GPU you're getting is going to handle these sort of programs. But you're also probably not receiving 10 people's streams, so you might be okay. Now, I, th I believe uh, vMix recommends only maybe three or four uh, streams being sent to you at once. I believe we've done six at one point, and it works. So I really would love to test 10 to see really <laughs> what can we do? What are the limitations that we have? Now, the computer that I use is a crazy monster. It's got like a Xeon processing uh, chip, which means that CPU is like this big. And it is uh, the, very similar to computers that like ILM uses to export giant videos of stuff. So it's, it's a monster. And we bought it specifically because we were having all this all the issues with our origin who at the time has gotten a little bit old, had gotten a little bit old. Um, I've been working also on this game stream. Let me show you guys. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah open all of it. So I've been playing around with vMix a little bit. Oh, is it crashed? Oh, there we go. And just look at all these great, like the amount of layers to rebuild our gaming stream on vMix is very complicated. There are a lot of things in play and so many layers in there. This has been a lot of fun, though. I'm not going to lie. I've had a lot of fun putting this together. <laughs> but we'll see if that ever I ever keep building this out because it's it's a process. Uh, oops. Oh. I have one come from the chat that sticks with vMix, Kevin. U.S. War Machine and a couple of others ask, Mike, do you send your feed to Kevin through a separate profile in OBS? Now, Kevin, do you want to explain to them how... You know, me, Andy, Nick, Greg, the whole team 
I'll have a profile set up for you. And not only that, we're going to get another question about Barrett's setup of how we can also send it to Barrett. So do you want to run them through of like how I, the game player, will send it to you and how how easy that is? Sure, absolutely. Uh, it's there with SRT streaming, you essentially have a, a, a like a an address that you use to send. And it is, hey, let me see. I'm going to see if I can break it down really quick because it is simple but very annoying and difficult to figure out it took us longer than i wanted okay uh so it is srt dot slash slash forward slash your ip address then colon then the the port that you're forwarding to and then question mark latency equals 200 so i know it's a lot of jargon but Essentially, you can use a program like OBS to send, instead of sending it to Twitch or to YouTube, you send that over directly. Oh, look at this. The, it's see-through because you're green. Sorry. I That's know. Cool. It's That's so cool, cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you can use a program like OBS to send it over to my computer if or the receiving computer has the ports open. That's the most annoying part with SRT streaming. It's hard to open up ports. It's it's actually once you know what you're doing, it's pretty simple. You just have to go into your um, IP stuff and or what was into your modem. That's what I mean, IP stuff. Into your modem and open a port range, and it could be as long as it's not being used for whatever. It could be any series of numbers, and for every port that you have open, you can then have someone send a video directly to that port and you can utilize that and grab it um but yeah one of the most annoying things let me see if i can write this down somewhere it's easy to grab and then i can share here uh, give me one second mike yeah of course kevin take your time it's actually really really cool and it's fun that people ask that, right? Because we can set up these different profiles and have it so easy to switch from Kevin over to Barrett on his days and be able to stream that. Actually, it's so easy that you could even create profiles within OBS and stream for your normal streams and then a kind of funny stream. As many of you know, I stream on my own time, similar like Andy does and stuff. And we have our whole setups, right? We have the Andy stream, the Mike stream. But because, you know, I'll, I'll tell you two things. One, OBS and Streamlabs OBS make it so simple where you can create different profiles and switch on the fly if you'd like to do that. I was actually very nervous because I'm a big dum dumb when it comes to streaming and tech. I actually run all of my personal streams from Streamlabs OBS, which I really, really enjoy. And then the kind of funny team, I use OBS, the generic program, and I have a profile set up over on that where I can stream to Kevin and Barrett and even run the streams if need be. But a lot of you will see that of I'll switch back and forth or I'll go back to my own. And it's really, really cool of what OBS does where you can set up these different profiles, switch on the fly and go to a whole new look, a whole new setting or stream to a whole new person like we're doing. So for SRT streaming, which is some really high level things that like I feel like for most people, they won't be u utilizing. But this, I think, understanding this text that I put up was the most difficult part so once you've opened up the ports on your computer what you do is you find out your outgoing ip address which is not the same as if it starts with 192 or 10.00 that's not the right one you need to find out what your ip your your outside ip is and you can j literally just google it and it'll tell you what your ip address you stick that where the x's are and then you put the port that you've opened up and then you send this to whoever wants to send you the stream. Uh, yes, the public IP. Thank you, chat, for letting for fixing that. Uh, and then they can put this under... Let's see. So let's go settings. Let me move out of the way, make sure I'm not showing anything bad. Okay. So all you would do is put that chain here under servers and set to custom right there and that is how you send your srt stream out and then if someone has set up their side as a listener they can pick that up 
But yeah, this is definitely like understanding. No, understanding this chain was definitely like the most annoying thing for me. But we got there, and it was thankfully very successful. I'm not showing Kevin. my IP address. He's not showing his IP address. Oh. He's a veteran in the game in fact, now. We don't even share our my IP address because you can go to um, I think it's called. Like, a, you can essentially set up a custom DNS server and then use text instead of your IP address. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, the chat's getting me. They're funny kids. Oh, yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're good. So, and you can do that for free. There's, there's certain websites that allow you for free to create a, a, um, a way to hide your ID. So, when I send Mike the information, it's not even visible there. So, that's, that's one level of protection that you can add. Um, let's see. What else should I do here? I have uh, another fun one, Kevin. Once you're ready, it. you let me know. Uh, this one actually comes into our streaming assets and actually what we've introduced during our kind of funny games afternoon stream. Scoompoof would like to know, I'd love to know how the bar works and how to make that bar empty over time. Like, Kevin, can you make an hourglass that makes the end of the stream or something? So, Kevin, we took the bar idea from our good friends over at Game Attack team. Always remember, when you're streaming or content creating, beg, borrow, steal, anything. Everybody learns from each other. Everybody gets better with one another. But we actually approached the Game Attack team to learn more about their health bar, and Kevin was able to master that and turn it into what you see with our daily achievement bar. So, Kevin, question about the bar. Tell us all about that. Okay, give me one section. Let me now introduce our right screen capture here so that I can bring up stuff like this. Right screen, yeah. Remember, name things in a way that you can remember what they are and make sense so that in the future, if you're creating something new, you can use that same asset instead of building another asset on top of it. And I don't know if that causes slowdown throughout the computer, but it's one of those things of like, why have things duplicated? Keep everything nice and organized. So we put that there, and we're going to bring that all the way to the bottom. That way, the layout is on top of that. You see that right there? All right, before I look at that, give me a second, right screen. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's show the right screen. So this is the Streamlabs page where you can create things like the Stream Boss. Uh, it gives you a URL link that you can copy and paste and introduce it as a browser source and essentially, it's made this little bug that we can see right there. And you can go in here and change the settings. I can hit reset, and then it pops it up and makes it so it clears it out. So I don't think that we can make it so it's time-based, but you'd have to play with the settings in here because this is more react, like built to react to uh, gifts, subs, donations, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm sure that if you look around, people have made assets like that for OBS. OBS also has like a forum page where people make stuff. Let's see. I can show you some of the stuff that I've played around with here. Filter. If we go to filters, add, there's move transition, recursion effect, render. Hold on, what is it called? user-defined shaders. This stuff's crazy and it might crash OBS. Actually, I should probably shouldn't do it because it probably will crash it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can add to OBS that's really cool, like the audio, visu like the audio visualizer. Um, every once in a while in Games Daily, instead of bringing up my camera, I just bring that up and it kind of reacts to when I'm talking. Uh, and it's someone created it and it's just available to be shared on uh, the OBS forums. Let's see. Um, I forgot what the question was, Mike. Kevin, they would like to know about the bar. So the question is, oh, okay. what's up with that bar? How do you make the bar work? And can you actually make it empty over time instead of fill up like we do? Yes, you can. Actually, that's its intended purpose. Let me see. What's a good way to copy here? I'm going to add browser source. And it's already in here, so it's going to be a little silly. But let me see. Take that out. Let's call it Stream Boss, which is what it's called.
Make source visible, sure. And the, it, so it pops up like this, you know, it's just a generic thing. And it wants you to put the URL that I've copied here. So I'm going to do that over here where you guys can't see. Great. And then I don't change any other settings and I just hit OK. And what should happen, yep, there it is. Now, you can change some of the settings so that this box isn't as big, but it doesn't really matter because what you can do is you zoom, you hold Alt, and then you can crop around it. I thought he meant he wanted it time-based, but you can see this is what the actual bar looks like on its own when it's just introduced. Now, the way we do it is we flip the bar right there. Are you, are you talking? No, Kevin, don't worry about me. I'm ordering okay. lunch. Okay, sorry. So we flip the bar right there, and we hide the text by just cropping it out. And that's as easy as it needs to be. You can change the colors in um, in Streamlabs. You can change what affects it, I think. Test one you can definitely change the colors, because we set it to these colors. And... Um, Right, yeah, the, the right way to do it, oh, wait, yeah, there it is. The right way to do it is it's supposed to be a health bar that you're chipping away at. So, yeah, we can, you can totally do it that way. But it made more sense for us to just flip it, crop it out, and then put it where it needs to go with a PNG on top of it uh, that, that hit it and that, that made it look like part of it. Streamlabs pretty simple, and it does a lot of really cool stuff. They have a lot of, you can go to the apps, or their little app store. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Stop. Not funny. That's all uh, right, Kev. Good job on Let's the bar, see. though. That was really cool. Yeah, it's it, this Streamlabs makes it super easy to use all widgets. They have an all widgets section, too. So if we go to eh, Stream Boss, right screen, we can see there's a bunch of different tools. I really like Stream Labels. If you go into Stream Labels, you can download this program, and then it creates all the little tickers that we use in the bottom in in the is like this folder with a bunch of auto updating word tabs that um or word program where, what were they word files that are constantly updating via the internet and then you can introduce them i guess we could do one really quick uh let's see open and then we're going to do a text file so I've downloaded this program already. It's installed. And then you can go text file and then we can, I don't know, subs, let's call it. Okay, and it's probably, you'll do read from file and then you have to go and find it. So give me two seconds. Oh, <laughs> that solution no longer works for writing stuff. Uh, browse. And let's see, I think... So as long as you've set up everything correctly, you should be able to find it easily. I haven't set it up correctly. Well, maybe I have. Let's see. Twitch. Fill time. Fill time. Where is it? Now I have to go find it. Give me two seconds. Sorry, folks. No worries. Twitch chat, remember, we are checking out questions from the Reddit, the subreddit of Kind of Funny. And then I'm going to come over to you. But today is all about learning and growing and taking notes because Kevin Coelho is schooling us on streaming 101. Remember, if you'd like to go longer, you can fill up that daily achievement bar through follows, bit donations, gifted subs, subs at the tier one through three level. Or if you, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your dog walker, your dentist, that cute barista at your local Starbucks has Amazon Prime. Well, guess what? You can take that Amazon Prime account, link it with a Twitch account and make a Prime gaming account. Prime Gaming gets you two awesome things each and every month. Twitch and Amazon Prime are going to send you monthly gaming deals. Maybe it's awesome cosmetics in a certain video game you like. Maybe it's free DLC. Maybe it's a free game. I don't know. But they're sending you free stuff. And then most importantly, each and every month, you get one free sub to any broadcaster here on Twitch. So take that money from Amazon and give it to the people you love. 
Maybe it's us here kind of funny. Maybe it's my good friend Tam over there in the Twitch chat. Or maybe it's some other streamer. But remember to take advantage of that because you definitely want to use Twitch Prime because it's so, so great. Uh, we're having some fun. Twitch chat, I'm going to come to you for questions here soon. Kevin's continuing to answer all the questions from the Reddit. We're having fun. And yes, this will be posted on YouTube. YouTube.com slash kind of funny plays along with our Monday and Tuesday streams. You probably have seen they're hung up in the processing cycle. As everybody knows, if you upload the videos to YouTube, sometimes they just get stuck and it sucks. But we will re-upload those and we'll make it happen. Kevin, continue on as I step away for just a moment. All right. So then what we've gone is we have so stream li labels, which I organized in the perfect way. And I don't know why I doubted myself. I should have just looked where it should have been. Has a bunch of different like lists that it creates. So session session top cheers top uh, subscribe ses session subscribers. Let's do that one. So you can introduce it there, and then uh, you can change a whole bunch of stuff. You can change the color. You can change the font. Go in there. What do we use? We use one that starts with a B a lot of times. Let's see. A, there it is. Hit OK. Hmm. Maybe this was a bad choice because it's not popping up with anything. Not enough of you guys subscribing right now. It would be real helpful for this test. Let's scroll. Let's scroll. I'm not seeing anything on that. All right. Maybe I'll change it to something else. Let's go to subs again. Uh... Easy enough, just hit browse. It's already going to open up in that folder. 30-day top donators, sure. Top donations in the last 30 days. We can open that. Perfect, you can see it there. Okay. Awesome, like, ugh, it's enormous. So what we do to make our lives easier is we go in there and we hit transform, fit to screen. Bam. So now you have this giant list that should auto-update if someone, uh oh, huh, that's weird. That should have done something else. Uh, but what we can do is then alt, and why is it not pulling the right way? Mm, this is an issue. Interesting. What is, there's something going on where it's not grabbing the right way. Shoot. Recently, I'm pretty sure... Andy told me about this issue. Resize output source size. Space output resolution will resize. Oh, that doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> well, sometimes you break things. And it, this is why you need a control Z function. Damn it. <laughs> uh, copy filter. Shit, where was that? Well, Mike, I broke everything for the first time ever on... on uh, Hell yeah! See, Control-Z uh, no longer works. That's, that's great. Funny. Reset, transform. Nope, that didn't work either. Damn, that's crazy. Can I... Sometimes when I break it fully, Kevin, I feel like I have to like completely delete the source and then go back and reset, like just redo it all. Do you what? notice that sometimes, Kevin? I mean, or is honestly, there a way to fix that? I've never had this happen before. Oh, really? Where, okay. Yeah. It, like, well, again, I was trying to do something I hadn't done before, and it totally broke it. But let's see. What if we control background, reset output size, source size? Yes. Hey, there we go. Everything's back to normal. That was pretty simple. Back. Just had he to go. It. Yeah, I had to go and, and pick something else. Why do I have a red square over me? Oh, that's from the other one. Hold on. Hold on, folks. Yay. So that's the live stream. I've just clicked on something I didn't want to be clicked on. There we go. Okay. We can go back here. Let's reintroduce that text thing so I can show you guys. What did I call it? Subs? Ah. I clicked enter. Cancel. I can't have it have the wrong name. Let's call it subs. Uh, uh, uh. Look at that bar almost at halfway. Thank you guys Yeah, so thank much. you to everybody for starting up that hype train. Level 5, almost there to completing level 5. Great job, Twitch chat out there. And thank you so much for the love and the support. Truly and honestly, we really appreciate it over here. Kind of funny. It makes it all possible, and it makes it so much fun to be around all of you. Remember, we're going to be taking some questions from the chat here in just a little bit. But, Kevin, as you do this, it's actually funny because I have a perfect question coming in from Reddit from Sapphire Diamond Ruby. Any advice that you could give on how you approach troubleshooting 
slash problem solving issues that happen either on stream or off stream. That would be great. Kevin, you just ran into a problem. You had to troubleshoot on the fly. What are some of your techniques to solving these problems that you hit, whether they be during a live stream or off stream? I think that the first thing is try to stay calm. Like everything's probably going to be okay, you know? And even if things break, we are so lucky that all our best friends out there understand what we're doing is often silly and a bit much every all the time. So just remember to stay calm. Try to figure out the solution. Think of the steps involved and what could be broken. So if that was broken or if one of these things were Sorry. Right now, the problem we had is I knew what I had changed, and I realized that if I did that to something that utilized the full screen, it would probably undo that. So it was just like, all right, what did I do? Delete that um, file, see, or not file, that source. See if that fixes the problem. It did not. So it's like, well, what if I do the same thing to something that takes up more of the screen? And it worked. So you kind of just have to... Try to stay calm and figure out how you can undo it or figure out where the leak is coming from, essentially. Where is the issue? What do, we, what do we shut down so this, you know, uh, the leak will stop? And then how do we fix it? Yeah. So you That's, just gotta, great. That's great, Kevin. Yeah, patience is so important for these sort of things where once you calm down, relax for a minute, You'll probably figure out what's wrong. Let me see what file we have. To my good friend out there in the chat, my good friend, Sean Thomas. Sean Thomas, you can ask your question right now. I'll answer it for you or have Kevin answer it. But also, Sean Thomas, how do I look at my new Hunted Thieves crew neck? Kevin, do you notice my crew neck? Did you see my blue Hunted Thieves t-shirt yesterday? I like it. I like it. Kind of Funny Games cast. You can catch live YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. I mean, check it out, y'all. Check, check it out, y'all. Check it out, y'all. So... Um, this is kind I'm of different. Sorry. sorry, just to quickly finish with this, we can mm, I, see now for whatever reason, when I minimize it, it totally makes sense. So we're going to minimize it so it fits. Ooh, that's way too small. Oh, another thing that I really, really like is you can uh, go to, you can right click on anywhere in the screen, hit preview scaling and switch to canvas. And now when you hit space, you can zoom in, move it around. There it is. We want it to fit there, so what we're going to do is Alt, pull it, and crop it. That's pretty close right there, but I can't read the rest of it. So what we do is we go into here, Filter. I think it's Filter. Add, scroll, scroll, and just have it scroll. Whatever feels nice. There it is. And then now to get out of this, we go to Preview Scaling, Scale to Window. Boom. And that's a, sorry, what was your last question? God damn it. Really cool. That that was a great one. We actually have a fun question that I, I actually really enjoy. Twitch chat, I promise we will be coming to questions from all of you. But Sean Thomas over here asks, this is kind of different, but when you guys do live watch longs in the studio, how do you stop the bleed into the microphones slash desync, Kev? Now, this is an interesting one because I know Sean Thomas and the boys over there at the HQ boys, they do this similar to what you used to do. How do you stop the bleed-in or the desync on the microphones? Well, it's difficult. <laughs> what we do is we have a, an audio gate that hopefully doesn't catch the audio there from the, the TV that's going on. But a lot of times, it was an issue where we'd have to lower the volume. Uh, mm. And then we'd have them being like, oh, it's not loud enough. I'm like, well, it's going to pick up on the mics. Some A solution that makes a lot more sense that we never implemented is using headphones. Hopefully, now that everyone has headphones, we might be able to make something where we have all the sources coming out with the exception of uh, who, like the mic that you're connected to. So, ideally, we're going to have everyone sitting there, although I don't think they're going to want to use headphones. Maybe cool headphones like Mike uses, but like that's the ideal thing routing the, ang la the, routing the audio so that it's going just into everyone's individual headphones. These big headphones are a lot on stream your little ones look really good and you know they don't they don't show too much but yeah that is difficult and it's just unfortunately mining the volume levels um 
Zoom calls with people using speakers is the worst. Yeah, you have to be careful about that. That's why, like, now at home, everyone uses headphones. Everyone's got a pair of headphones on. Nobody's just, you know, got speakers going because it will pick up with uh, your 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 mic will pick that up. We occasionally have issues where uh, Greg's mic picks it up his uh, like the his headphones because he has it so loud, and that's probably not good for his ears. <laughs> Uh, final question from Sean on that one. Is your audio gate physically hardware or software? So at the studio, it was physically hardware. Uh, here, here I use a different program called NVIDIA Broadcast to reduce the noise around me. And like you, many of you will remember the vacuum annoying the shit out of you and everyone complaining online. Oh, the vacuum's so loud. The, va the, it's the vacuum army. so loud. But <laughs> NVIDIA Broadcast which you do need to have an RTX graphics card, which is hard to get, but even the 20 series RTX graphics cards work for this. Um, if you have it, it's pretty cool because the people rarely complain about my vacuum now, and it still runs at 1 o'clock every single day. <sighs> NVIDIA Broadcast Cat. is insane. Actually, NVIDIA Broadcast is how I'm doing my feed. Here, I'll pull it up. NVIDIA Broadcast. There it is. So my video feed right there, you can see my camera. It's digitally removing my background. See that? Bam. It's gone. I love it. And it creates my camera as an alpha file. But yeah, I can have my microphone here, and I have the strength all the way up to remove any external noise that's coming in. Uh, let me very quickly add audio sources here so that people can see how we yeah, do that Yeah, Kevin, here. set it up. We do While we do that, imports. I'll answer the question. Somebody said, Mike, what kind of headphones are these? These are Shure uh, earbuds right here. A uh, good friend of mine, JD, helped me find that. If you remember back in the day, I actually had a nice setup with Astro A50s and what I was using with my mixer, of course, the Go XLR. But with the new console generation and the new Xbox not having that optical cable, Actually, I was unable to have an easy setup like I've had with that Astro A50. So we moved on into these Shure earbuds. And I actually love this. I actually stole this from Andy Cortez and Sancho West Gaming. I really like the look of the broadcast, the feel of it. When you look at me in the camera, you don't see these big, bulky headphones as Kevin was talking about. And I actually have become more of an earbud guy. I like the look of it, I like hiding the cables behind me and uh, absolutely love this. So just something to think about. Just... You know, personal preference, but something I loved. All right. So earlier in the stream, I showed you how to route your Discord audio to your Wavelink. So now I'm creating an audio source. Uh, is that what it was called? Let me do it one more time. Because there's two different types. You have audio input and audio output. So I'm using an audio output capture, and I'm calling it Discord chat. Uh, and then I'm introducing it here, and we get a long list of stuff, and one of them should be Discord chat. Or Wavelink chat is what it would be called. Now, this is tricky because we're also Wavelink voice chat. There it is. And we're bringing it in. So now when Mike talks. This is Mike talking right now, checking in. We're going to put that at max out level. Let's take it down to negative three. You don't want to have it higher than negative three, or it could cause peaking. So you can just That's a great question, down. Kevin. I was just going to ask you, so on my audio levels here, when we look at OBS or Streamlabs OBS, what are we aiming for? Should I be maxing it out? Should I be touching the red? Should I be in the yellow? Should I just be in the green? What am I looking at when I see this bar as a newbie like myself? So yeah, ideally what you want is your audio to be a negative six. That is like a safe zone. So anywhere between five and 10 is pretty solid. Any lower than 10, it's going to be a little bit too quiet and hard to hear. Anything higher than that might cause some distortion in your mic. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's all good. That, that makes sense to me. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. So we're aiming for a negative six, Kevin, is correct. Mm -hmm. That's what we wanted at, negative yeah. six. And now I'm also okay. going to introduce my... So right now I have any Discord chat. So if someone jumps into this... Uh, let's say Greg decides to, to jump in and start talking, we'd be able to hear him as well. So what I'm going to add, we don't have my mic. So we're going to go back to audio output capture. And uh, I usually call this God mic because in the studio, that's what we would call it. We can just call it my mic. 
Just as long as you know what things are, everything's good. So that should be under NVIDIA Broadcast. That way we have the mic feed coming through without me talking. Let's make sure that's actually that's what it's actually called. Open up Wavelink. So yeah, it just says microphone and video broadcast. So that's what we're looking for here. There's so many options because I've played with a lot of things here. Oh, where is it? And video broadcast. Chat, let me know if you can see it. Oh, is it not here? Make sure that's what it's called. No, okay, that comes in as a different thing, so that's good to know. So let me delete that source, and we're gonna actually bring that in as an audio input capture, and we're gonna call it my mic. Uh, uh, and then broadcast, where is it at, where is it at? Ah, there it is, microphone and video broadcast. We're bring that in, okay, great. Now. Something I personally really like with uh, our the setup, I, I don't like the way this looks, especially because a lot of times I'm actually using it uh, half with half the screen being utilized like this, so that the other half I can have other things open that I need to look at and I don't want anyone else seeing. So my big problem is when this gets really full, it's hard to see all the voice channels that we have. So what I like to do, let's see if I can figure this out. I have it set up like that. I moved audio mixer to the bottom here and then I move it to the side. Boom. I also move this one to the side. Boom. I put this one in there with that because I never use the scene transition. I always have them set to cut. Oh, let's fade. Should be cut. There it is. And then, no shit, that was perfect. Ah, I'm dumb. Let me do that one more time. There on the bottom there. And this is something that I have to show Barrett, so hopefully he watches this and then I don't have to show him. The side. Because this makes it a lot easier to see all your audio channels. So now if I stick more audio channels down here, oh, I need to lower that too. Negative three. I wish, there is a way to do this. So if you open this up, you can go to advanced audio preferences. Here we go, and you can set whatever you want. So you can set it to negative six, not negative 66, just negative six. And then set this one to negative six. If you have any sort of audio sync issues, like um, at the studio, the board would be 200 milliseconds faster than the video. So we would have to put a 200 millisecond delay and we would add that here. Um, also, important to note, you can record several different audio tracks. So right now, it's just recording to all six tracks. There's zero reason to do that. So what I like to do is I'll just set it to record to track one. Stream boss, stream boss. Uh, 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 uh. And for editing purposes, when we're doing gameplay, I will also set all the audio to track three. And then the stream boss will set that to track four and we can set gameplay to track five. That way, if our editor like Roger wants to go in and lower the gameplay audio, he'll have all these extra tracks. Ideally, it's not affecting anyone. Like uh, when we upload things to YouTube, it's only gonna look at the first two tracks. Um, we were having some issues maybe a month ago when we started doing this that the audio tracks for uh, my audio were duplicated. So people in the, uh, in people that listen to, to the content, they were like, oh, why, why is it that, that we're getting so much, Kevin sounds like he's talking in a tunnel or something. And it was because my audio was duplicated in those tracks. Fun, fun stuff, close. Um, let's see. What if we want to get a browser feed? So let's add one more audio, and I think that's going to be audio output, and we'll call it browser. Hit it there, and it's Wavelink. Let's see what we called it. Pull up Wavelink to look at that. Uh, we just called it browser, so it should be Wavelink browser. So Wavelink system, Wavelink music, 
And that's the cool thing about the Wavelink program. It allows you to do all these separate channels. And again, I believe that the banana... Oh man, I wish I knew its full name. And, and I know you guys have told me earlier, but I wish it was uh, a little bit easier to use. But you can, I think you can use that program. Voice Meter, thank you, Banana. You can use that program to do something similar. And that is a program that I believe is free. Um, so anything in track two won't feature in VODs or clips. Twitch also, hey, hold on. Twitch also lets set up audio track. Nope. To to only be for live streams, so anything. yeah, that's which is really interesting and cool. Uh, so Snatchy, is that right? Snatchy Buckles in the chat says that he can. The Twitch allows also lets you set up audio track two to only be for live streams. So anything in that track won't featured in vods. There's a lot of cool stuff like that that you you gotta really figure out to get there. Um, what else does the chat want us to do? Uh, Sergio Pew Pew, you did in fact miss the Woodpecker uh, science class. And let me tell you, it was phenomenal. 10 out of 10 stream. So yeah, it's interesting. As I move around, you can see the differences on uh, our Twitch stream between the broadcast green screening, which again, isn't actually green. There's no green screen that it's, it's cropping out versus the uh, actual physical green screen using OBS to remove the, the green. Like, it looks a lot cleaner with Mike's setup than it does when I'm moving around. There's some artifacting around my ears. See that? But, pretty cool. I don't need to have a green screen to pull out and throw on there. Uh, all right, Mike, is there... What, you what ready else? for another what question? Else? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. Yeah, Kevin, so here we are. We're rolling up near about the two-hour marker. Oh, wow. And thanks to everybody's support right now, we will go for an additional 30 minutes. So thank you for continuing to fill up that bar. I'm going to take one more question from the Reddit. Then I'm going to switch over to all of you out there in the Twitch chat that are watching right now and supporting, allowing us to go for this extra time. So if you have some questions that you want answered live, Please cue those up. I will tell you when to press enter. Don't do them quite yet. And I will answer your questions along with Kevin. So let's go right into it, Kevin. This is coming from Brad from Vancouver. I'm trying to roll MP4 clips into my broadcast. Is there any way so that the host can hear the clips playing back? I'm able to provide program video returns using OBS virtual camera, but can't get the audio right. Thanks for keeping up and being great. Interesting. So the host can hear. So I here, let's use your woodpecker video to do this. Actually. Yeah. So let me see what these two messages are. From... Okay. That's some later stuff. Um, uh, let's grab the downloaded video here. And uh, so there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can use VLC. Well, I guess you'd need a Wavelink. Let's stay away from that solution because it's easier if we just do it this way. Let's drop this as a source there. Did that not work? That's weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's bring it in as a VLC. No, media source. There it is. And we'll call it... Uh, Wood. Woodpecker, great. And it's like Khalif Adams. If you have questions about VMix, we'll gladly answer them. We're going to be taking questions from the Twitch chat and maybe incredible you very very soon. Congratulations on your appearance on Podcast Unlocked, my favorite Xbox podcast. I guess besides my own, Kevin. You know, but I still love Podcast Unlocked a lot. But like Khalif Adams on Podcast Unlocked, it's pretty cool. Pretty freaking awesome. Pretty freaking God, he's so cool. Okay, so I've got it closed, file when active. No, I have it set to loop. And now the video will play there. Huh, the video is backwards. That's weird. I don't know why I would be doing that, but let's just flip it easy enough to flip. And full screen this. So, essentially, we all want to be able to hear this. You can see that it says woodpecker here, and there's audio going. So the, it, the video is flipped for our purposes. But what we would do is we'd open up advanced audio properties and then we'd go into Woodpecker 
And what you want to do, it's set to monitor off. You want to set it to monitor and output. So now I can hear it. You guys can't hear it because I don't have that being brought in as a source. But you can, s Mike, should, Mike, can you hear it? Let me turn on my no, broadcast. You can't because I'm not sharing this uh, OBS. Mm, so what mm -hmm. we normally do, but I can use Wavelink. Again, Wavelink's not always the solution, but it like again it can be very very helpful. Let me see which one's going. Uh, huh. I guess what we'd want to do is bring in this OBS. I'm not going to do this because it's going to break my setup, but. Uh, what you then do is you capture this OBS feed by uh, sharing your window on uh, t on Discord. So you share your window. Whoops, that screwed things up there. But yeah, you can see this. I can choose to share. There we have the OBS feed that I'm working, that I'm actually using to stream. And here we have the OBS feed that now I'm showing everyone how things work. So I'm going to go live there. Boom. It puts us back to where we're supposed to be. And Mike, can you hear the woodpecker now? Kevin, I can hear the woodpecker pecking that wood. So that is how you share a video with your stream and with people on a Discord call. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, uh, let us know and I'll, I'll think more about it and find a solution that, that works for you and everyone else. Great job, Kevin. Let's take some questions now from the Twitch chat. So please, Twitch chat out there, queue up those questions, comments, and concerns, whether they be about streaming on OBS or through vMix, as, of course, our good friend Spawn on Me, Khalif Adams, would like to know. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Price coming in right now. What recording options do you use in the studio with the Blackmagic switcher? Looking for a Blackmagic design solution if you have any to recommend, Kevin. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure I understand the question. What recording solutions? So we use the HyperDeck, I think is what it's called. Let me see, HyperDeck. Is that what it was called? Hyper. Yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, Blackmagic Design HyperDeck. It's $1,000. Pretty expensive little device, but... It does really, really high like recording, and it works really well. We have had issues with it, but it was because the studio was really hot, and I think we melted it a little bit. And we reached out to Hyper or, or to Black Magic, and they had to send it back, and we got it replaced. They replaced the component that had melted. Um, so let me show it here. Let me turn the woodpecker off. Turn the right screen on. So yeah, you can see is the this is the hyper deck we use to record, and it records files in massive. Like we have it set to the lowest setting, which is just higher than we need. But as of right now, we've been doing we've been doing recordings, uh, just using uh, OBS. So we just have uh, we hit start recording, and it records an MP4 at something like 15 megabits a second, and the quality has been pretty good. I haven't heard too many complaints about it. And uh, it, it does its job. So maybe save your money on something big like this and just use OBS. Going forward, we're going to continue to use the stream, uh, the HyperDeck, but uh, it's mostly because we already own it, you know? <laughs> Love that. Uh, yeah. Robo Borealis asks, can you do, quote, virtual, quote, screen in OBS if I don't have enough monitors? You know, I, I don't know. I'm thinking right now if there's a way. I'm sure that there's a way you can set up a virtual screen, but you could do this without without all the screen grabbing. So if we wanted to, we could minimize this here. Let's let's try to redo this page on one screen. It's a fun little challenge, uh, and that's as small as that'll go. Let's do this like that. So you see what happens is things get cropped differently. So let's do rename this to three mon setup. And then we're going to create a new source that is a single monitor setup. 
one mod setup. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna cancel in here. Yeah, see, things become very, very tight. Let's see how much space we can utilize. And we don't have to utilize all these windows. So if you wanted to, you could have a, a window open that you bring up, change the name and look at chat there. So let's let's do that. Let's close this guy. It's okay, I know where to find it. Thank you very much. Close that guy. Um, and then what we're gonna do is do the same thing, display capture. Uh, that's not gonna work anymore. So we're gonna... Oh, uh, let's just call it slot two. And it's just getting this. So the quality of this is now a little bit less than it was because it's taking up just a little bit less real estate. And the more people we have on the call, the less real estate we're gonna have. Crop that down. Same thing, filters. Add chroma key on there, green, that's, that's fine. Putting that guy right there. Now we're gonna do one more, slot one, display capture. Now the question becomes, how do you play a video game if that's what you're gonna do? Because this does become really tricky and it's now, the screen is smaller and smaller. No, zero, zero is fine. Now, I think that there's two solutions. One, no, I, I think it'd be really tricky to play a game on a setup like this. But you could, what you could do is just have a game running on top. No, because it's capturing the screen. So instead of doing a screen capture for this call, let's delete that. And instead, let's capture the program itself. And how do you do that? You go to media source window, window capture, perfect. You're gonna call it discord slot two. Perfect, it grabbed it. And then theoretically, so this will be a little bit higher quality. Capture there, minimize there. And now if we open up another program on top of it, notice you can work on this program. If you trust your setup and you have it set up the way you think you do and it actually does work that way, let's do one more. Uh, Discord, display capture, no, we're doing window capture, call it Discord slot one. Now I can't see the chat, Mike. Uh, we can turn off capture cursor. So if they're saying anything that I need to respond to, you have to let me know. Uh, uh. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is add the background image. It's been added in the other source, so it's right there. It's, you can just add existing, hit background, bam. And what we're gonna do is move this guy around right here, put it underneath, crop by holding alt and moving to the side. Let's play preview screen canvas now we can go in here now you can see the quality not great but again this is uh, like a capture of a capture what we're doing right here for introducing this program and let's see move down to mic slot two put them in the right place ah Zoom out a little, there it is. And to zoom out, you, uh, well, to move around when you're in this canvas mode, you hit the space button. And that allows you, as long as you're holding the space button, you can move around or zoom in and out. And this allows you to do a lot of the fine detail that can be tricky to do when your screen is not very big. Oh, we need to go a little higher on that. Sorry, Mike. There it is. And crop. I always like cropping the sides because I'm a psychopath. Okay. Ah, still missing a top there, aren't we? Still missing. No. Ah, I see what's happening. My screen needs to be cropped a little bit more. Perfect. There we go. Uh, still getting a lot, a little bit of mic on there. There it is. So I know that Andy is a bit of a stickler and kind of like, you know, I don't do the best job because I, I move around quickly, but Andy... I really enjoy that he can come in and be like, yo, you need to crop a little bit more there. And it's like, fuck, 
because I don't notice those details, and it's cool to have someone that does. So then what we can do, let's pretend we're going to play a sweater. So what is that? Got that on my desktop. Give me one second. Going to minimize it, which freezes the videos there. And then let's go back to Discord. There we go. Sweater should be opening up now. Super annoying. It makes you put a password in every time. I don't know why. You know, it's my house. You should be able to figure that out. That's not the right password. Really. It's pretty incredible that you're doing this all live wild, Kevin. Great. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. So what we're going to do here is hit play. Now, this is where things are going to get tricky because Sweater takes over everything. So I'm not – and, like, we're pretending we only have one screen. So let me see how this works. CPU is still around 60%. Not too crazy. I just went away. Why? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's taken over. I can't see anything else. So we're going to switch back to OBS. And then we're going to add – Video capture game. Capture. Look at Kevin doing all this on the fly, people. This is wild. Uh, capture any full screen. Yeah, let's see that. All right. And so now, hmm, but there's no way to confirm it. That's funny. <laughs> so just for my edification, I'm going to move this over. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm going to stick this on another screen. Let's see if I can show you. The gameplay is frozen. That's interesting. Okay, my camera is frozen, but I think that's just because I minimized OBS. I sure. Huh. Right, there it goes. Sweater. And Sorry, where is the... Yeah, unfortunately, if we're pretending this has one screen, this does totally work. And yeah, it's uh, here. We can show it there. So you would hit start streaming, switch over to sweater, and just assume that everything is working Game. there. Yeah, and then open up your phone, and you can have uh, yep. uh -huh. the chat there. So there is there is ways to do this with your friends on more than one screen, on, on only one screen. Is it easy? No, 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 no. It's n not at all. <laughs> very, very tricky. But you can figure it out. You can make it work. Great job, was... Kevin. Good answer on that one. Yeah. Uh, up next, coming from Cost. Cost is me, sir. I'm... Cost is on me. I'm not watching or listening, so sorry if this has been answered earlier. What GPU slash RTX card are you using, Kevin? Nice, easy one from the chat. Yeah, so we have a 3080. We used to have a 2080 Super, and I kind of feel like the numbers when not playing games, when streaming, were a little bit stronger. But the 3080 is kind of built for gaming, not so much for all the uses that we're doing here. Also, we're really, really pushing the limitations of what we should be doing. Like I've told you, that when we use vMix, it has issues, but that's because, like, Specifically, it says not to do more than three SRT streams at once, and we often do four. And even more than that, we've done six. I would really like to test 10 or 12. So I'm One sure day we we'll, will we'll do, do that. Yeah, I know. Will it burn the computer uh, down? It might. It might. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be worth it, baby. Uh, question from my good friend, Brian McBride. More of a statement. Could we walk through and fix Mike's washed out stream? One day we will fix that, Brian McBride, because you know... It irks me all the time, and I just want it to be fixed one one day. I'm, Keeping it going, Kevin, tell me. About that screen issue, I'm really curious to see what your default settings are for the the just the brightness and all of that on the computer. Because it, it might be the gaming computers. You've kind of got messed up the, the uh, output settings, and that's what's happening. Like, it's going out to that HDMI. And the colors are uh, the colors are a little washed out, but we'll get okay. there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get that. Two Is great Khalif, questions. What was Khalif's question on VMix? Do you ever figure I, that out? I'm looking for him next. I got a quick question for you, and I'll look for that one. This one is from the Mangalorn and the U.S. War Machine. Says Kevin Snowmike Mike, 
what bit rate do you guys stream with and what is the average streamer bit rate with average stream with average internet uh so pretty much the highest that you can do on twitch is six and a half megabits a second and then on youtube i think that like i think it's like 10 so you're very limited with those numbers because that that's it that's the highest you can do can we do more yes when andy streams to me he is streaming at 30 megabits a second and i think barrett streams typically at 15 megabits a second and there is a significant difference in quality the record quality that i'm getting from andy streams is prettier than our normal record quality because of that we record in 15 megabits a second too so really andy there's no reason for him to send over 30 because we're not recording that high, but there is going to be some package loss. So it's like, well, might as well send that if you can send it. I uh, looked at my uh, internet like numbers recently uh, and I wanted to see what a month of streaming has been like. Six and a half terabytes. Thankful we have, what is it? What do, we, what do I use? I use um, Sonic internet and it's uncapped no like penalties for anything so we are uploading and streaming a lot here uh so six and a half terabytes in one month is is much higher than we ever did at the old studio but we weren't transferring files to cool greg's computer then so that makes sense to me why it's so high but yeah uh the higher the bit rate the stronger or the smoother the video looks and anytime you have like particles happening that's going to cause issues just internet's not quite there yet but with andy's setup it's pretty damn close it's it's pretty cool really really cool that's right uh kevin what am i running up here what do you and i do six five six thousand five hundred is what i think i do for my i have a pretty average yeah. internet up here in the mountain as well pretty yeah, average I, I think you have something like 30 megabits up and or 30 megabits up your down is yeah, probably uh-huh. a lot higher um and yeah the, the most we can usually get out of your setup is under 10 megabits a second under 10 for sure yeah. yep and it's the same with Greg and Nick because they also are in the same levels a lot of places here in the bay area can get you a 1000 megabits down but the up is not as important for most people it is for us and it's really cool to have symmetrical 1000 up and down cuz it means we can send massive streams while receiving massive streams using the SRT streaming. Uh, more questions coming in from the ch- Twitch chat. Please feel free. Mm-hmm. Great job to everybody for enjoying our fun little streaming with Kevin. 101 day. This was all made possible because of your support here on Twitch. Thank you all so much for coming it, in and supporting the kind of funny games afternoon stream. It Tell looks me, like what we've got. So we we're got like at- what about 15? Well, what we're we actually got? at two hours and two minutes right now because we okay. did. It was a little so bit. So we have twenty-eight of, minutes. Okay, twenty-eight minutes. And if the kids want, it looks like we're pretty close to hitting another fifteen minutes, and mm-hmm. then an additional fifteen after but that. We if could, they want to go take, forty-five, we, we go longer. for an hour. We're yeah. we're very we, close, people. We're very close if we want to. We are opening up to to people's things. Let me have a little fun, really quick. If, if uh, let them have Mike, a little fun, people. Did you did you ever bring find Khalif's uh, thing? I didn't see Khalif Adams with the question. So if Khalif Adams does come in, t- uh, Khalif, just type it in the chat. I will gladly have Kevin answer it right away. We'd love to see it, Khalif. You know that. So uh, Sean Thomas you- asked, though, when you guys do podcasts, are you using Discord Capture or the SRT ver- servers? Because it looks crisp, he says. So that's uh, when we do podcasts, it is Discord captures that yep. we're using. And the way that works is. It, we're just capturing that screen, so the more people you have on my left screen here, the lesser the video quality is going to be because the, the square becomes smaller. But we're also making it smaller in the actual source that we're using. I would love to someday try vMix calls for doing all that, although there's supposedly a little bit of a delay that can cause an issue because um, vMix calls, a de- we could use the full 1080 resolution and then crop it down instead of using a quadrant of the screen that's broken down. Also, I wanted to really quickly go in here, browse, fire. Let's see. Downloads, no. Working from home. Graphics. Okay, cool. 
So we've got a couple things here. I want to show you guys how I did the fire. So if, if uh, Barrett is watching, he'll know. Barrett, I'm going to send you this fire later. So I literally just went on YouTube, typed fire, saw a fire that was on black, and put it on here. We're going to set it to loop. Hit OK. And there it is. It's enormous. Does it need to be 4K? No, but it is. And whatever. We can always resize it. So we go to transform, reset transform. No, we want to fit to screen. That makes it a little easier to handle. We'll make it small like that. You can see there, Mike, it's got black behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into filter. And then you've got audio effects or video effects. There's no audio, so we don't need to worry about that. But in video effects, we can go and do what we call Luma Key. There it is, Luma Key. Turn that bad boy on. You can see it's removed. What Luma Key does is it removes the black. So let's see. what. And then, and then it's what I always say. Just play with the settings until you figure out that's not doing anything you want. No, it's affecting the wrong thing. Ah, there we go. That was the magic one. And you want to dial it in so you can see as much of the fire. Because if you dial this up too hot, look at that. That kills it. That's a sad fire. That's a soft burn. Mm -hmm. We want a full burn, Kevin. Full right, burn. Right, right, right. Burn so blue. There so there it is. The fire is being cropped out. We can hit close. Put that on there. But that lo looks a little boring. So what I'm going to do is minimize here. Make a little more space so that we can see everything. Hold on. What we can do here is add a group, which creates a folder where we can put all this thing. Fire. Okay. Put the fire in there. And what we're going to do is then duplicate the fire three times is what I did. Toss the fire in there. And now we can grab the fire. Oh. Why is it moving all of it? Sorry. Okay, I'm going to pull it out of the folder. It shouldn't be moving all of them. You should be able to move each individual one. But, oh, God, I hate this. Sometimes this happens with uh, OBS, where if you create a duplicate, it just doesn't work right. Oh, see, that one's gone. That's weird. All right, let me delete that and do that one more time. This is why the control Z function would be so good. So again, we go to media source. We're going to call it fire. Browse. There it is. Perfect. Transform. Where is the transform button? There it is. Transform to fit to screen. Then minimize it. Add an effect on there. Actually, why don't we here do copy? Copy, then we're going to paste. Duplicate is not an option. It should be. That's weird. Well, let's make sure. Yeah, we can move it now. And one more. Perfect. And let's move that one too. Great. So now we have three fires. We can once again go into filters, add effect, Luma key. And we're going to Luma min smooth because we figured it out with the last one. We're still getting a little bit great. Whoop. Ah. We forgot to set it to loop this time. So go into the right or click on it, set it to loop, hit OK. Does that affect all three of them? It absolutely does. And look, the Luma effect also is there. So to differentiate them a little bit, I'm going to flip one of them, maybe make it a little bit smaller. So it doesn't, so you can't just tell that we've got the same fire going on there. Okay. Uh, something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to stick all three of these in a folder called Fire Effect. And now we can do things to just this folder, and it'll affect all of them. Not sure why that circles the way it is, but there it is. And then we're going to put there that beneath the bar. Where is the stream boss? Bam. To create kind of a layered effect. And uh, one more thing. Let's see. Filters we can add here. Color correction, okay. And this is all just playing. Like, I don't know any of this stuff, but like, so now we're making the fire redder. We can shift the hues, which will change the color. And there we have our blue fire that everyone loves so much. And now if we want, so blue fire there, but we can go in, hit filters, turn the blue fire off. There you go.
that is how you do some like a fire effect that we did for whenever we do the fire sale. All right, what you got for Kevin, me, Mike? I had a great question coming in from Reddit, and they wanted to know how do you make it so easy for Barrett to pick up the streams or even Mike to pick up the streams? This is something you and I, you taught me, but you set us up with different profiles, Kevin, oh, right? You cool. made different loadouts for me and Baird, depending on what we can and can't do. But like, how did you make it so easy for it to be a blink of an eye switch, but still look so good? Well, it's the magic of OBS. So there's a couple of things. If you're using Streamlabs OBS and you have an account that you can share with people, then you can make changes on there and it transfers over. If you're using something like vMix, you create a save file and then you can transfer that over, but you need to have a similar setup for all of these things. Otherwise, it, you're telling it to grab a monitor that's not maybe not on the left side. I know Barrett has things set up differently where he has, instead of having the Discord call on the left, I think he has that in the center or maybe in the right. Uh, so there is a little bit of uh, stuff like that that you have to think about when you're using some of the scene collections. But yeah, OBS makes it really easy to do. You can see here under profiles, I've got a bunch. When we're streaming to Twitch, it's already pre-saved. And if you go into the settings, the, the part that changes is the, the part that says uh, like where it's streaming to, so the streaming destination. Um, so look, if we change YouTube, it gets rid of that side chat because YouTube has no reason to have it there. And then we can go back to Twitch, and there it is again. And let's see. And then when I, yeah, same thing. For scene collections, uh, essentially this this is all the different stuff. So right now I have a new scene collection set up called Test, which is where I play around here. But if we go over to Working From Home, we click it there. Hold on, give it a second to load. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, ah, there it is. So this is actually the collection that we use for streaming that we are actually using right now on our side here. Why is it missing stream information? So view, um, docs, stream status, activity feed, stream information, bam, there we go. There we go. So yeah, if you just remember to, that you can use these tools, you can create a duplicate and make changes to it. You can create multiple different streams set up and ready to rock and roll. Um, and it, frankly, it makes it really, really easy to do stuff like this. It was a little annoying to switch between our Twitch stream and our YouTube streams for when we do uh, our morning shows and then our podcast ones. So once I figured out how to use these profiles, it's so simple to go in there. And now I don't have to log into Twitch every time I'm trying to do that here. Or I, I don't even have to use the Twitch key. It, you can just log in OBS, and if you do that, you can switch between stuff, and it doesn't cause any issues. So you can see under profiles, I have one set to Barrett, and that means if I switch it on that, it's just setting setting my stream directly to Barrett. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, how are we doing, Mike? Any other questions? Love that, Kevin. That's a great great answer right there. Uh, coming in from Reddit right now, we have a question coming in from Reddit, and the question is from Moose Springsteen. He says, what happens when someone's game feed gets all weird and crazy pixelated? It seems to happen when someone doesn't move their character for a moment, or if the section of the screen stays the same for a bit. Kevin, a lot of people see us with our multi-cam, multi-feed setups whenever we do Warzone or certain other games, but what is that pixelation that people are seeing? Uh, so that is an effect that's happening because of the SRT streaming that we're doing. Essentially, at that point, it's losing package. So the, the stream quality that's kicking over is, I, I don't know exactly why it's happening, but essentially it's, yeah, packet loss is someone in the chat. And that's because we're in a static thing. It's not refreshing the points. And though that area of the stream is just kind of, not refreshing the way it's supposed to when it's moving around it's got different images that it's putting there and that so it's just a matter of leaving it on standby and it's an effect that maybe if we had everyone with a higher bit rate it would be less common but you see that a lot with uh what 
Greg, Nick. I mean, it's pretty much everyone. Bless, Mike, Andy, it happens less frequently. Uh, but it's it's just a, a bit rate issue. Love that. Question coming in from the Whatnots over in the Twitch chat right now. The Whatnots goes, any good resources slash tutorials for learning more about SRTs? <sighs> SRT is tricky because it's one of the newest ones. And like a lot of the information that you find out there, it doesn't exactly walk you through how we're doing it here. But really, all you need to figure out is port forwarding. So does your ISP allow free port forwarding? Because some of them don't. And then once you've got that set up, it's that string of code that we put up there. I'll bring it back up. Right there. Your IP address is going to go where all the X's are. And then the port that you forward opened up is where the Y's. And then you just send that information to whoever is streaming to you and that that should be it but the port forwarding does get tricky it's not easy to know and like you have to find a port range that your computer has open kevin well, question coming in saying. from oh yeah keep going oh so, so sorry snatchy buckles in the chat says srt oh. latency settings can resolve this issue a higher buffer can avoid packet loss going from 200 300 makes all the difference but i do have people already coming to me being like oh it's it's delayed because for every you know that 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 adds an extra millisecond of delay and like you think that that's not much of a difference but there's many times on stream where andy will shoot someone and be like oh it's a headshot and then we see it and it kind of like lessens that effect and it's i mean obviously i'm not it's not just andy literally everyone has that where they, they'll like yesterday we were playing uh mount your friends and there were a couple moments where, like, you can see that Nick had, or Nick talked about falling, and then he fell. So the more that we put that latency in, I, I don't think the the screen tearing that way or the the video tearing that way is that big a a, a deal. But um, if more people bring it up, we'll probably add more of a latency, and then we'll balance to see if more people are upset about the latency. <laughs> Question coming in from the Reddit, Kevin, from Haunted20. Do you prefer the new mic setup for the home streams versus using the Shure SM7Bs? Do you think you will change mics when you go back to the new studio? Audio sounds great. Was just curious. No, I honestly, I I, I like, well, I guess for, for, depending on what you're talking about, for our, um, individual gameplay stuff like we do these game streams i like the individual mics i like these little guys too they do a good job handling external audio especially if you've got uh, a program like broadcast working like that would imagine how well that would work with someone next you know like the vacuum is going off right now i don't know how much you can hear it but can't hear it at all perfect yeah so i like that a lot However, that being said, I earlier did say that there are issues with people's mic not being as loud and being able to change the levels on the fly. It's so much easier to do with an actual soundboard. There's a lot more finesse that you can do with that as well. So I think in the future, when we eventually go back to working in a studio, uh, we will probably stick with our soundboards because I like them a lot better. Also, you, it's not like you can have six wavelengths connected into a computer and have their input coming through. Actually, you might. I haven't I haven't looked into that. But it's just it's nice to have something physical. It is one more thing that can break, but so is the Wavelink app that we use. <clears throat> like I have issues with it all the time. Literally every single day, I have to go into it. I have to remove this microphone broadcast as a source and then bring it back or else it, for whatever reason it doesn't register in our Discord. It doesn't register in the computer until I do that. Kevin, coming in from Voltronic81 on the Reddit, how do you export, send a finished stream to your video editor? Oh, man. How do we send a finished stream to our video editor? Uh, super, super easy. Uh, we have a, Google, a shared Google Drive for the company that is, I don't know, five terabytes, and a folder within that that is called... Um, raw or something like that and literally when we're done i upload the the 
the folder here. I can show you what the my folder. So we have a folder here with a bunch of streams and a bunch of different things that we recorded on. You can see this one right here is going to be the the Twitch stream for today. And I just grab that, drop it in YouTube so it uploads there because it should be ready to go from our recording. And then I also drop it in that Google Drive. And with our speeds, like this is a 20 gig folder that uploads in three minutes. Uh, and then Greg, Cool Greg also has the same internet that I do. So he can just download the folder or download the video and edit on it and then upload it to Patreon. Um, sometimes YouTube, depending on what it is or where it's going. Uh, yeah, Rooster Teeth as well. Yeah, so that Google Drive has made things way easier. We do have a server that I use here. For whatever reason, I couldn't figure out how to get the speeds higher than 100 megabits a second. And that is, I think, more limitations on the, like, on the Ethernet splitter that I have in my home. because. One gig Ethernet splitters isn't like a thing, or one gig is, but I so I get yeah. There, there's just limitations with the speeds that we use on the server. We were using for that for a little while, and in the studio, that's what we'll be doing. We'll probably have a server rack where all the files just get transferred, and Cool Greg's computer will be hardwired to that, and he'll be able to just pull those files off there. But yeah, Google Drive is amazing. Uh, it does take up a lot of space, and every week we clear out the Google Drive. I keep videos. I try to keep them for at least two weeks. So if uh, Roger needs to edit something that is more than two weeks old, then he's kind of fucked. <laughs> I guess we've deleted those raw files. Big Lebowski says, how do you compress your MKV files? Also love your voices in my ears every single morning with Kind of Funny Games daily podcast. Uh, we don't. We just record directly onto MP4s. Is it more dangerous? Sure. Sure it is. But at this point, we've done it, what, three times a day for the last year. And we have I don't think we've had any corrupt files that we've lost. So, and we always have a backup too. So, we record via OBS for, wait, wait, it says 15 megabit per second recording, uh, local recording. And then on top of that, we're always streaming to somewhere. So if anything happens, let's say my computer, there's a blackout at my house, the computer goes down, then the footage would be lost. Because an MKV file, supposedly, if it cuts midway through, is, is savable. I've never been able to figure that out. I've had things where a blackout happened, and the MKV file was done. It was just gone. Uh, so we switched over to MP4, and... Um, we, sorry, reading something in the chat. But we switched over mm -hmm. to MP4, and we've never had a thing where it, it randomly cut and we lost the full file. We are live streaming to either Twitch or YouTube where we can have a slightly more compressed version of the file afterwards. And there's been times uh, where I hit the button, and for whatever reason, OBS did not start recording, and I noticed maybe three minutes late, and that's where I would notify cool greg hey we need to get the the youtube version download that add those extra three minutes and seamlessly uh stick it back stitch it together good stuff right there kevin mm -hmm. question in from our good friend sean thomas over with the hq boys sean wants to know oh where did i, I might have lost him he says what do you do post podcast eh, where am i uh i might have lost you sean thomas it was something about like what do you do with the podcast after you put, like, where do you put, what's the post production on the podcast? Oh, here it is. I can't believe I didn't ask this. What does the post process look like for your podcast, Kevin? Uh, it's, it's identical to the post process for the morning shows. Uh, essentially we grab the files. So depending on, so on, on the, the podcast that there's always a live feed that's going to YouTube. So, that becomes the YouTube live version that will go out to Patreon people later. And then I send another version of it to cool Greg via the Google drive. And he then ed edits it and uploads it from his end to YouTube or to all the audio places that we need. And it disseminates outward from there. 
Good stuff right there, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, while we do that, I'm going to introduce a browser for us that will be chat. I've never done this before because with Streamlabs, you can get a chat option, but I'm going to do that without using Streamlabs by just entering our chat link in there and see how that works. Hit OK, see if this works. Great, yeah, so you can see there's the source. So what do we want to do? We're going to want to get rid of the white. Let's see if this works. What do we do? We go to Filter. Effects, chroma key, yeah. And instead, we're gonna do custom. Select a color. Oh, pick screen color. Bam. Okay. Oh, but all the text went away too, did it? Turn that effect off. Or we just can't see it. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Maybe. Similarities down. Hey, look at that. So, yeah, you can use Streamlabs to introduce text, or you can just do that. Doesn't look super great, but we can. You play with the tweak these little settings here, and eventually some of the stuff starts coming back. Uh, all right. Snowbike Mike, you want to hit me with another one? Yeah, of course, Kevin. I love asking you questions, and I love hearing all of your answers, just like the best friends do out there. Uh, let's keep it going right now. See what else we got out there. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, it's too fine of a detail. Nicholas123 says, What kind of keyboard do you use, Kevin, and any other hardware you utilize for managing these streams? Uh, sorry, give me two seconds. Let me delete that. That didn't work out the way I wanted to. I guess just use three lamps for the check. I use, let's see, what is this guy called? The Black Widow V3 Pro. And I really like it. I, I recently switched off. I was using um, my Logitech solar keyboard that I have over here. That Blasting gave me so much shit about. But I really wanted something a little fancier with more clicking. Oh, it's 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 cropping me out. You see my little solar powered keyboard, uh, but I wanted something. I like the feel of mechanical keyboards, and um, I also like Razer has such cool lighting effects with stuff. So I've got it all set up. So if I'm typing, it like yeah, you can you can kind of see the pink that shoots out. It's that blue and pink that kind of funny. So known for. Um, same with my mouse. I'm using. Let's see, what is it? Another Razer mouse that I, I just got, and it's very comfortable. Gaming mouse, the RC30. Shoot, I wish I remember the name of it. And then obviously I've talked about using the TARDIS to play with. Uh, I use the foot pedals. I, honestly, I don't even know what brand they are. They were just the cheapest one on Amazon because I didn't want to use anything too fancy. Let's see, go to orders. Um, and the foot pedals, revolutionary. It, it, they they made it so that I can actually play video games while streaming, which is such a goofy thing. But you know, there's certain days where there's not enough people, and or you guys are playing Fortnite, and I'm just sitting there wanting to play so badly, and now it's possible. Let's see if I can figure out where these damn things are. We are so close to pushing for that extra 15 minutes to make it a 45-minute stream here. Kevin, how are we doing on time? I'm, I feel like I've just lost all time and place with you, Kevin. We've had so much fun. Let's see here. So it looks like we're about to hit 30 minutes. So we're, I guess, so we have, about to we're end. about to end unless we unless hit that we 15 hit that minutes. Okay. Bit. Either way, I've had a great time. Thank you guys for your interest in all this silly shit. Uh, so here, yeah, let's see. no doubt. Mm -hmm. Uh, God, 10 minutes of Fortnite. <laughs> Me and Joey have been having a lot of fun with Fortnite. We're actually starting to get to the place where I'm like, we're not half bad. Yeah, see, this organization, like, I wouldn't be this disorganized normally. But here are the foot pedals that I use. O-L-L-G-E-N. Uh, and they're very simple. They're cheap. $45. And uh, it comes with its own software that's probably recording everything that I'm doing and sending it to somewhere. But... This is a work computer, so who cares? Uh, and uh, it it is a, it, you can make it a MIDI board, and that's actually how I can control stuff with it.
What kind of other streaming software have you guys used outside of OBS? What are your thoughts on Ecamm Live? I don't know what Ecamm Live is. Mm -hmm. Sounds, mm -hmm. sounds sketchy, though, you know what I mean? I was going to say, is that one where Kevin has to get in the hot tub? <sighs> Ecamm Live. Is that what it was called? Ecamm Live? E cam la e cam with two M's? M's live two M's two M's two M's. No, I'm I'm not familiar with it. it looks I'm not familiar. Is it? It looks like something like OBS or maybe a VMix. Uh, someone is asking about resources for VMix. Oh, so they're asking for resources for SRT streaming, and there aren't many out there. Sorry about that, but there are a lot of resources for OBS and VMix. If you go online, VMix has its own. Uh, software that or vmix has a youtube channel that like they get really they give a lot of information on how to do stuff it's actually really really cool and i would absolutely be down for a hot tub stream i just have to think about all the stuff that i need for it which isn't much not much not much no, you just got to no. get that beautiful body out there and having some fun no. Uh, we are about to hit the extra 15 minutes. So we're going to go for an extra 15 minutes right here, right now. Remember, we got a lot going on. This has been streaming one-on-one with big Kev dog Coella. We were able to answer all of your questions out there from Reddit and on Twitch. If you have questions that you want to know about cool tech, about all the awesome stuff Kevin does alongside Barrett on the production side with team kind of funny, make sure to queue them up in the chat right now or put them in the YouTube comments below. Remember, you can catch all of our VODs from our Kind of Funny Games afternoon streams on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays where we have all the fun stuff up. Remember, Monday and Tuesdays just went up. I'm taking a look. I can see Mount Your Friends 3D, the 420 special has gone live. And let me tell you what, that was a wild, fun stream that you don't want to miss. And Blessing and Andy's Resident Evil 7 playthrough is now live, and you don't want to miss out on the starting stages of that game. Do they scream? Do they shout? Do we turn off lights and lock doors? Tune in to find out. Of course, tonight, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, we will have an 80s action movie watch along with myself and Nick Scarpino and two incredible guests. Our good friend Joey Noel and Greg Miller will join us for Roadhouse. So don't miss out on that one. Same Grab stuff. some popcorn and get ready for that tomorrow. We'll be back with another kind of funny games afternoon stream. Myself and Baird will be playing games. We're going to play MLB The Show against one another. And we're also going to play probably some Fortnite because Barrett loves Fortnite. And I love gaming with Barrett and all of you. Then on the kind of funny X cast, we have a very special guest. Lord Cognito from the Iron Lords podcast will join us to talk all things Xbox. So if you have any questions for him, remember you can tweet them at me or you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can upload your questions over there and get ready for the fun as we talk more xbox with gary Witta, perry paris lily and myself and a very cool guest that you definitely want to know about and hang out with kevin this has been an incredible stream from woodpeckers to streaming i think we did law kevin i think we did a really good job so high fives all around big dog how you feeling about it i'm feeling really good uh someone in chat had asked how we do the zoom in thing and it, i you right click on the screen preview scaling switch it to canvas so I'm going to show you guys one more time because this is very, very helpful. And then you hold down space. You can zoom out by scrolling and also move around by holding down space and then clicking and dragging. And then one more time, preview scaling, preview scale to window to put it back to the, the other way. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, I am still like, if anyone has any like fun challenges, I love figuring out new stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, we definitely speaking, want challenges. Kevin wants challenges. Yeah. Speaking of Boris, there is his little cam. He's uh, looks like he is sleeping. It's too cold for him to come out. Well, Boris. I love there. that. Yeah. Love that live feed right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, question coming in from Good Crack and Show. Would you generally recommend staying away from digital filters for audio through OBS and Streamlabs and focus more on mixing? Or is there space for where those tools are necessary? I, so, it, I mean, there's definitely a space where those tools are necessary. We haven't, we haven't uh, gotten to that part where it's just like everything that we've needed to do, we've been able to do uh, just via 
the very, very like limited tools that we have here where I can right click. You can see it there. I can right click on Mike's camera and I can, I'm already boosting his volume to 180. So that means his, here, I bring it down to 100. Mike, go ahead and talk for me. This is Mike talking to you right now on boosted 100 levels. So yeah, you can see, if you look at the Discord chat that's right next to Mike here, he was coming in around negative 10. So I thought that was a little low. I just brought it up. And now, Mike, go ahead and talk. This is Mike coming in on a different lowered scale. And I'm having a good time today. I'm having really, really fun. Now he's coming in around negative 6. And that is the ideal goal. Not having it too loud, but loud enough to hear. Yeah, ideally, you want everyone to come in at the same, at like similar levels. That's why with vMix, it's so cool that, that, here, let me open that up one more time. You can design it so that all the feeds that you're getting, um, you can set the audio. So this is just the default, but we're going to go to open, SRT mix. Okay. And then you can see all of the levels have been already adjusted and it saves the adjustment so that in the future, when if we've got like Mike's feed is always really quiet. So you can see that that 303 is set to the top. Andy's and Nick's are louder. And so to we lower it down so that we can get at Mike's level and all the audio comes in around the same level because ideally you never want someone's audio to be like blasting loud and when you cut to it all of a sudden there's a jump scare because it's so loud uh k-pop 1104 asks how will the kind of funny play streams work when you get to the studio and i'll tell you what i'm really excited kevin because i know you've been working really hard to make that space something really really special and I'm really excited for the opportunity to try something new, a little bit different, and work with the space that we've got and the team has created. And I think you're going to see something really, really fun. But we're excited about the idea of what that could be. Kevin, do you want to give them any teasers about that? You want to hold it close to your chest? Uh, no, I'm, I'm down to give them teasers about it. Uh, I think it's, I mean, it's tricky to say. So right now it's theoretical. And it is difficult to buy computers. So that's going to be another little problem in, in, our, in our flow of stuff. But yeah, ideally what we're going to do is we're going to have a room where we can record these gameplays. And that's probably as much as I should go into detail. There should be some fun and surprise. And yeah, yeah, yeah. again, there's a lot of stuff that we've learned from here. Um, I see people asking if Mike's going to move to SF. Theoretically, there's really, I don't know that there's a reason for him to move there because we could always bring him his source in the same manner that we've been bringing in uh, like we're bringing him now. So especially if everyone's using headphones, he doesn't need to be there in person. Would I like him there in person? Sure. Look at him. God, it's a good It's show. a It's a fun it's a conversation we're currently having right yeah. now. It's a very but fun we, one. We also Kevin, still have a lot of time, done. I think. We still have a yeah. decent amount of time before we get to where we have to have that conversation in a more serious manner. Kevin, as many of you know, I can't stop thinking about Pokemon, Kevin. I just can't oh, stop thinking Lord. about Pokemon. So I got more Pokemon cards, Kevin. And You're I need you, before we end this stream right now, I need you to choose a number. One through six. One Five. being the top, six being the bottom. Five is a Charizard, Kevin. Oh. Let's open it up and there let's see what we get right now. You ready? Yeah, I'm this so should ready. end our stream and we're going to have some fun, y'all. We ready? Let's pack a Zard. Something cr incredible could happen. Kevin says that he gets... The sweats whenever I do this, and he gets a little worried and nervous, nervous and that's what I love. So, Kevin, first, we always have to see our code card. What's in the code card? Oh, it's a green and white one, Kevin. We like that. We flip like it. that. Wait, are you going to show the oh, code? Oh, flip it for the people to get the code. Yep. There it is. Uh -huh. there get it the is. code, people. It? Get the it? code. Kevin, four from the top. One, two, three, four from the top. Let's get it set up. Here we go. We got one of them grass cards. One of them grass cards. We got one reports. of them oh, grass cards. Oh, which is keying out. It's keying out in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's some bear or a or or a ring. Big scary Shin bear. Shinotic. Mushroom head. Vanillish. Oh, vanilla ice cream cone. Yep, yep, yep. A Turos. Pretty cool. Is that a reverse hollow? No, oh, no, it's gone now. No, nope, negative. Pansage. Pantsage, broccoli head. Wishy wish. 
Wishy Washy. Oh, Wishy Washy. Wishy Washy. Wishy Washy. Washy Washy. Rocky D. All right, Kevin. We'll come down we to the final Here cards. We Here we go. Dude named Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Okay. Oh, a reverse shit. Hollow? A reverse hollow. What do you Lugia. got, Kevin? A reverse hollow. Lugia. Lugia. Yeah, that's okay, pretty cool. Okay. That's pretty fucking cool. All right, here we go. Ready for this one? Yep. Holographic. What do we got, Kev? Arcto Zolot. Zolt. Zolt. Ooh. Looks really cool. Looks really cool. Oh, wow, Kevin. Yeah, it's a cool fossil Pokemon. That's cool, Kev. And you got to love. You gotta love the Lugia, Kevin. Yeah, Isn't the that Lugia, a is, one? the Lugia is really dope. Yeah, that's, that's a, a special right? one right there. That's a legendary Pokemon, I believe. Great job, everybody. I was Kevin, like waiting I think to with... see the chat to see how they're gonna react. Oh, if they pop up or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like good pulls, good pulls. Yeah. Uh, can we all make sure to let everybody know that our good friend King Franchise is ducking me and Baird out on the diamond? So, King Franchise, here's your call out tomorrow. At 11 a.m. West Coast, Best Coast time. Maybe pack your little PlayStation into work and come play us on the Diamond in some MLB The Show. We'll be playing on stream tomorrow, and we'll be having some fun. Thank you to everybody for tuning in and hanging out with all of us. This has been another Kind of Funny Games afternoon stream. Streaming with Kevin 101. Class number one is in the books. You all passed. You all did a great job. I hope you took notes. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you watch it back on youtube.com slash kind of funny plays <laughs> if you missed out on any of the information that you need to know about in the streaming world and of course if you want to know what's up with woodpeckers and why they pecking that wood you can go check it out Love as it. well as that powerpoint will be up all of there but it was a ton of fun it was a great time tomorrow we'll be back again with another game stream don't forget tonight 7 30 west coast best coast time roadhouse with me and nick joey and greg Miller. We'll all be watching. We'd love to have you all there. Enjoy your evening. Have a great afternoon and enjoy Sancho West Gaming. Bye, everybody.